It's like all the shit that I've talked about on my show. Like I could have violated thousands of policies. I mean, I'm there. daily violating something. Yeah. So the the um. <laughs> all right. So so uh, I'm trying to think here. I just threw me off. Matt's like that line alone is going to get me thrown off YouTube. Well, I, uh, you know what are we talking about? Demonetization. I had a I had a prepper on yesterday. Oh, and, one of these survivalist guys. He was on season one of Alone. He's called the Angry American, and uh, the conversation was going really well. Except for every you know few minutes, he would talk about the illegal aliens <laughs> and how the army was going to bring them in, and they were going to shoot all the real Americans. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you, you had me right up to. Oh man, um, yeah. So we've got a ticker. Our solution, I, I actually hired a professional production company for the show. All right. I got tired of it. I'm like, okay. And uh, what the, the solution they've come up with is every time the guy says something questionable, a ticker runs across the screen saying his views are not my views. <laughs> and hopefully that's going to not get me demonetized. Hmm. Yeah, you hear that? That's that was my response. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what? what? So, Wade, what is going on with the 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 demonetization thing? Fuck if I know. Some people are blaming me, kind of because of something you told me on the last show that we did. Because I was like, you said you could use B roll footage in shorts. Uh oh, you, you so can. <laughs> Matt's like, you so, can. You might lose the, your money. But yeah, you can. Oh, yeah, you can do it. I mean, hell, I can rob a bank tomorrow, but I mean, I might go to jail for it. <laughs> I don't know if that's why they're getting their channels taken down. No, that's not it. No, but that's not it. Too many people that B roll shit, man. It, it, that ain't it. But a lot of people, what I've, I've seen them do is they take other people's content and they'll use that. But the only way they break it up is they might just go on there and talk for a second. Like, there's this one guy mm -hmm. named stacks and mm. he will take somebody's whole entire episode play it and just pop in and be like you see what this line <laughs> motherfucker just said listen to him bro and then play it and then like let it go for 10 minutes did you hear that line motherfucker and, listen and to what he says next play a two hour play a two hour video of sammy the bull interviewing <laughs> yeah, someone but. yeah yeah that's what those guys do and i'm just okay like, you should be demonetized at that point yeah, yeah. yeah. really i mean uh, what they should do is so so if anybody's watching doesn't understand, there's been several, several um, channels that have been just have been demonetized completely across the board. Everything on their platform has been demonetized. So these are guys that have been on the air, whatever on the air is it, this is on the air, right? I'm going to say that yeah. anyway. So on, they've been posting videos for two or three years. They've got hundreds of videos up. They've been monetized, monetized. They're making money. And then suddenly they be, they get an an email from uh, YouTube saying, "Hey, your channel has been deemed to be using other people's content, and we're demonetizing your entire channel, and and, and it's irrevocable. Like, it's not changing." Now right. they of course try and they they try and do a um they ask for uh you know they they try and dispute it you know they sent you can send in a dispute explaining like that doesn't make sense like what i'm doing they try and explain it and they come back and say yeah we've reviewed it your your dispute and we're going with our original no you're demonetized and i've been down that route before and let me tell you that you can you can claim it as much as you want usually it takes about 45 minutes for them to come back with a response saying hey no we've reviewed it you're done and then if you're part of the youtube creators program which i was at that point in time you actually talk to a human being and they don't give a damn either you're done that's what happens well i'm i'm pretty sure you Posting some nude. Okay, I was. Yes, but, I was. But that's still, you still get the same damn response. Well, I would think that you would get what my thought would be. It would at least come back and say, you know, take the video down. Like, you have a problem with this video. Take that video down. Send a letter saying, hey, bro, we have a problem with this video. You post yeah. anything like this again, we'll we'll demonetize you. Okay. But this was nothing. They got no, they got no warning at all. And there was no, you know, they, there was no way to, to, you know, rebut it and, get it overturned, speak with anyone, anything. Well, yeah, what, 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 what kind of buddies? content have they got? I mean, Matt said something about uh, conspiracy theories and all that stuff. I mean, 
Well, you're getting well, hit pretty hard there. Well, no, wait. One, one was so two of them were guys that were that were doing um, like mob related stuff. Jeff okay. Nadeau was okay. one, and he's got a pretty sizable channel. I think he was at like sixty two, sixty five thousand subs mm-hmm. somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and that's pretty much all he does. He'll throw in an interview every now and then. And then another guy who had a smaller channel, his name was Loomis, and they do kind of the same stuff, but they'll do like movie reviews, but they just talk about it. And like he had just got it um, monetized. So I, I, and none of them are really saying like, I mean, they're saying what YouTube's telling them, but it's so vague. It could be anything. Right. 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 It's like you right. violated this policy. And I'm just like all the shit that I've talked about on my show. Like I could have violated thousands of policies. I mean, same with you guys. You, we've got a lot of the same people. On I'm there. daily violating something. Yeah. So the, the, um, <laughs> all right. So, so, uh, I'm trying to think here. I just threw me off. Matt's like that line alone is going to get me thrown off YouTube. Well, I, uh, you know, what, okay. Oh, so wait, Let's here's the other thing. Stamp this. You know, you know, what's, what is her name? Um, you know who Pearl is? Pearl. Mini Pearl. Pearl. Yeah, exactly. You know, Pearl. She's a, like a conservative female that talks about conservative issues and, She's yeah, got like red hair. She's she was demonetized recently. Well, you've got your answer for her. She's freaking conservative. They frown on that shit to begin with. Okay, but listen, here's the thing. Like, uh, let's say, so I've listened to her a lot, right? Like, I like her. And about two or three weeks ago, and she always says certain things that I'm like, yeah, I like, you know, I, I kind of agree with that. And I agree with it. And, but about two, three weeks ago, before well, it was about a week ago, she got demonetized. Right. About two, three weeks before that, I, some of her newer stuff was coming out. And I genuinely, there was stuff she was saying. I was like, ooh, oh, Pearl. Like, even if you believe that. Like, Don't say it. Keep probably, your mouth shut. Like, what was, what was one of the things she said was, um, I, I hesitate to say it. I was about to say, I don't know if I repeat it right now. <laughs> she was adamant. She, You know, she's always saying stuff like, you know, when women are like, oh, men are horrible. And she would say like, well, I don't understand why you say that. Like, men built the world that you live in. Okay, the like, Jordan Peterson line, right? Yeah, and she right. goes on and on. She really runs with that. Well, about two, three weeks ago, she added, you know, if you really think about it, men are better than women in every single category. Mm-hmm. And then she starts naming, and she, she she starts naming the categories, and she mm-hmm. really, really makes the argument. And I thought, oh, and I was watching this one, and I was like, oh, Pearl. I mean, even if you believe it, sweetie, like, <laughs> even if you really, yeah. that's really your, you know, maybe you could say, well, you know, Men are better than women in certain aspects, and women are better than men in certain certain respects. You know, women are better caregivers. They're right. better nurturers. They're better in support. They're better. You know, there's certain things women are better at than men. So right. we have our roles. Let's say <laughs> she didn't do that. <laughs> she didn't go that way. And then she went bye bye. Yeah, and 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 here's the thing. It's not like I saw it once. Then I saw another her on another show. Same type of stuff, and then. Two days later, I see her like three times, and I thought, "Boy, she's go, she's running with this on everybody's platform." Oh, and geez. then probably within a week later, I see a post from her saying, "I YouTube demonetized me for no reason." I thought, "Oh, I they feel like there is a reason. We know a reason. I feel like you, you, you know." See, that makes me scared. Off though. reservation. Like, <laughs> Wait, like that makes me scared. Well, it's not even the money because I don't, it's not like I make a ton from this shit, but it's the time and the effort that I put in. It's I mean, like, there's a lot of time, man. Off. But yeah, yeah, I mean, because I do, I, I do all my editing and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know you yeah. do. <laughs> I mean, nobody cared. Wade doesn't care about me at all. He <laughs> could immediately put himself like, it's not about the money. What? Well, no, I'm just saying everybody's got reasons they would be ticked off. You, you would be ticked off because you're out of the money. Me, it's like, obviously, if I made money, I would be ticked off about it. But right now, it's the time and effort I put into all this shit for, you know, two plus years that it would get. And that, that's not that it's going away. It's still going to be there. But, right. you know, like I had a guy on not too long ago, and this was just goes back to I've got no idea how they censor stuff. It, I don't think we said a cuss word in the whole entire thing. And it was all about how he went to Colombia, South America, and lived with a lady that he, I think he knew the lady. It's been a minute since I actually done it, but I think he knew her. It was basically about how they were funneling money back to the U.S. from gold, like mining gold over there. Um, And he broke down the process. So interesting. Hadn't really had it, you know, told on the show before. And he wrote a book about it. 
a friend of mine introduced us because she was kind of telling him, you know, it was, went through the cartels. It was doing drugs back. To you. It was a way for him to launder money. Right. And and they blocked it. Mm-hmm. Like they said, it wasn't able to be monetized. And I'm just like, I don't get that. But then, you know, I drop an episode on John Wayne Gacy <laughs> and, you know, he done absolutely nothing nice his entire life for not one second, including making, from when he was making, a kid on up. Making people sandwiches. That's and, yeah. and that's yeah. OK. Yeah, and well, but, them but, the next, and so, that one went through in a day. I, I I figured it wasn't even going to get monetized, and when I hit the button the next day, I woke up and it was good to go. But you see, that's the thing with and and what you're what you're touching upon is a lot of the problem when when people are doing uh, cybersecurity or cybercrime episodes. So so when you start talking about, for example, money laundering, are um, you giving a blueprint for some idiot that has no clue what the hell he's doing? So yeah, is it instructional? Try. They don't want things right. that are instructional. Right. Uh, okay, that makes a little sense. Well, I mean, you you didn't really. And I give do a that blueprint. all the time too. I was about to say yours went good. Yeah, I had a blast cutting up shorts for your episode. <laughs> they were good, man. They were good. <laughs> I'm still the got Jim Carrey one. I loved <laughs> the cable guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like I said, yours went through, monetized, no problem. And, and I walk know. through step by step how the shit's done. Yeah. I still don't get that. Do you guys ever get something that you put out and then it's monetized and two days later, they suddenly make it, you know, limited monetization or? I've had that. Video? I have that happen a lot. Yeah. The only lot. thing that's ever happened to me has been, uh, you know, I, I was waging war with these guys on Telegram. One of them made a rap disc video. I put it up. It got got some pretty good attraction, and um, within 24 hours, it's demonetized. Well, so, yeah. Did huh. you change the title or anything on it? Or did not? Anything? Did not. It started out monetized, and uh, like I said, within 24, it's not. And the only thing I took, I took their track, which I mean, they're not claiming cop- copyright anyway. Right. Took their track and made a little dance video to it, and that was it. Two and a half minutes of that, and. There you go. Weird. Yeah, I had a video that I put up. I think it was one of them that me and Ignacio done on a serial killer. And I didn't even, I don't think I gave it a title when I uploaded it from DaVinci, because that's where I do all my editing. And I can just upload it straight to YouTube. And it was good to go. And so I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to post it Sunday. Sunday morning, I went in, I gave it a title and everything. And as soon as I posted it, it went to limited monetization. Ah, As soon as I posted it. Might as well be it's demonetized yeah like that, that's what i always consider like i've never had one completely be non-monetized yeah. but the limited monetization the difference is you might make 400 dollars on a fully monetized video and then if it becomes limited you made 60 bucks i mean ah. it, it's that dramatic well what if like on that particular one it took about six days maybe close to a week but they actually did monetize it do you get back pay for all the views you got no no, of because course. the advertisers are different. Right. Well, and by then, most people that's going to watch it have already watched it because right. it's your, your show drop. Right. Day, and so. You can't go ask ask them to watch it again. Yeah. Hey, would you but mind no, watching like, hey, that again? For me? This is, I know this is weird. Yeah, it's better the second go round. <laughs> director's <laughs> cut. It yeah, really I, is. I genuinely don't think that these guys care whether I make a dime. <laughs> right. like, yeah. Wasn't that great to begin with? Look at the analytics, Matt. I really didn't even watch the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I watched like 20 minutes of your two hour video out of guilt. It's like, ah. that's why I just send Matt shorts. I, I feel he can get through 60 seconds. My I God, can get Matt through 60 breathe. seconds. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, listen, the shorts. So when I say you, I use B roll, like I'll use B roll, but I'm only using a couple seconds here, a couple seconds here. And I'm dramatically changing the image. I'm taking, you know, I I'm taking a, a horizontal image and I'm only using one third of it, which is the okay. vertical. Right. Mm-hmm. And I put it a filter on it. So yeah. I'm changing it to like bad T there's a filter there filters in um, final cut pro. They'll be called like bad TV or they'll co- be called, um, you know, projector or whatever you right. throw a film and it makes Make it, it like, grainy. Yeah. 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 So I'll do that. And sometimes I even, a lot of times I'll play with the, uh, you know, the saturation of the colors and, just to try and match it up. And then sometimes right. I'll just do the color match. So it, it changes it. So I've altered that, those images dramatically. So that I'm okay. I I'm perfectly fine with the reason I say that is that my kind of like go-to YouTube guy is a guy named, uh, um, 
Julian uh, Dory, and he runs a channel called, uh, well, actually it's called Julian Dory. Uh, yeah. He changed it. He started it. It was called Trendafinder or something like that. Okay. But he, <clears throat> was that what it was called? Trendafire? Trendafinder. Trendafinder. I, I really don't know uh, why. I, I think he made up a word and thought it was going to be cute. And it. then he started realizing what happens with a lot of people is they, they put up their stuff. They'll come up with like a, a cool channel name. And then they start to realize after a year or so, they go, you know, people aren't really searching the channel name. They're searching my name. And they start to realize that that they they're branding themselves and they're putting another name on it. And that people are really interested in, and invested in them and not the name of the channel. Right. And if they left, the channel would basically die. So that's what happened with Julian is after about a, a couple a year and a half or so, he was like, Yeah, I'm just gonna put Jul- my name on it and brand myself, which is what he did. Then he talked Danny Jones, who runs concrete, into doing the same thing. And uh, I had already done that because like as as usual, I'm typically ahead of the curve. Um <laughs> But I did the same thing. I started with, you know, Inside True Crime. And then after about six months, I went, you know what? Let me put Matt Cox slash Inside True Crime. Right. Right. Um, Because a lot of people is going to search your name. So they're going to throw your show up there. And I noticed it. Like, I I noticed that if you looked like who people are searching, you know, Matt Cox, Matthew Cox, 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 Con, uh, you know, Con Man Cox. You know, it's like, but nobody, almost nobody's putting in, you know, they might put in Cox True Crime. But almost nobody was putting in inside true crime. Right. right. And I thought, ah, I already got it on a bunch of stuff. Keep that. So, yeah. So that was one thing. So basically, we didn't solve anything. We weren't going to anyway. Um, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. So I went to, oh, that's what it was. I went to Julian and said, Julian, listen, I'm, I'm freaking out. I said, this is what Wade said. And I sent him. <laughs> uh, I sent him everything. And I said, Wade said this. Wade said that. And um, and he came back and it took him like a day or two because he's busy and I, I don't feel like I'm that high on his priorities. So uh, after a day or two, he came back he, and, he, and I got the response. What is this? I said, okay. This <laughs> one. So I said it again. And then he was like, who is this? No, no, he, he knows who I am. So would that be fucked up? <laughs> You're like, you pour your heart out and he's like, Jimmy? So anyway, yeah. So that's what, what I sent it to him. And he goes, let me look at these videos. And then he looked at the videos that you had sent me. Mm-hmm. And so he came back like an hour or two later and he goes, you know, can you talk? And I was like, yeah. So he got on the phone. I was like, Hey, he said, look, I looked at that stuff and here's what they're doing. The problem is these guys are running really long clips of movies. They're not filtering it. They're not altering it. They're not. <laughs> and it's just too long. And, he, and and it's like video after video. And they're, they're talking about mob movies and they're showing a five minute clip of the mob movie. Right. You know, and so he was explaining, he said, you're using clips four seconds, six seconds, two seconds. You're altering it dramatically. You're not using the audio. I have used audio maybe three times. And even then it's three or four seconds. It's nothing. Right. So, you know, like on the, uh, the, uh, um, is it Al Pacino? No, it's, um, De Niro. I use like the De Niro thing, the last section where he's yelling at Henry Hill you know, what's so funny about me? What's so, like, I played that, but I altered it so dramatically. The entire scene, if it's two minutes, I condensed it down to about 12 seconds. Okay. Recut it, changed everything. And I told him that he's like, yeah, Matt, once again, he said, that's not enough. Like that's one little section. That's not, these are shorts. It's so he went over the whole thing and he said, stop doing it. And I said, okay, well, listen, the other day I took a video of, uh, of Joey Marlino's, a podcast on Joey Marlino and recut that entire thing. And I put that up and it was a short, so that should be okay. He goes, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I was like, what? And he's like, you can't do that. Just don't do that. Don't do that. Just take that down. And I, no, no, it's okay. I did take it down. He's delete it. I was yeah. like, Ooh. <laughs> and I, so I deleted it. Yeah. And he's like, don't, don't, bro, don't do that. He said, that, that is an issue. He's like, I've yeah. seen people lose their channels for taking other people's content, turning it into shorts, turning it into stuff. He said, altering it slightly, thinking they're fine. He goes, and then monetizing it. He is, he said, look, it's, it's not that it, the, the Marlino and those guys are upset and they don't even have to do anything. It's YouTube noticing it. And if it's a trend, 
then they just one day say, we don't like that you're doing that. And they take it down. Well, okay. all those guys in that mob stuff were redoing cl- or resharing clips from the skinny is what the, the show is called. Right. And like, I'm like, I don't think he's, I know he's not asking them to do it. He doesn't need to yeah. ask him to do it, but they're doing it. And it's free advertising for him. And then they're getting penalized for it. Right. 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 Well, I have a feeling if you ask Marlino, if he could do, you could have anything of his for free. <laughs> That's not in his character. I, I've read some stuff. People have sent me some things. <laughs> he, you I know who he just him. interviewed? <laughs> yeah, Ric Flair. Yeah, I'm I'm really wanting to watch. I like his podcast anyway. I actually do enjoy it. He he tells good stories. Uh, but I really want to watch this Ric Flair podcast. That would be nice. Yeah. It's it's gonna be uh, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy Neither that. one of them I'm interested. <laughs> and, and, but, He's like, I don't like Ric Flair. Woo uh, I haven't heard I don't know one person that's had a positive experience with uh, Joey Marlino. Not one. Oh, wow. I don't know anybody going to say solid guy. No, that's not true. That's the only solid. Only thing they say is stand up guy. Yeah. Really. Is, and he is. He is a true 100% mobster, which once again, that's not, 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 it's not a selling point for me, bro. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Like it's Joey, like, if you're you know, watching this, I'm a big fan, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You need to get Matt on your show. That'll be our barn burner right there. <laughs> I just he's got somebody told me the other, in the comments the other uh, somebody told me uh th- they said the mob code. If a uh, if a citizen or if a citizen uh witnesses you committing a crime, it's okay to murder that citizen. And it said but if one of your criminal co-defendants, um, uh, you know, cooperates against you, uh, it's unacceptable. <laughs> and I, but the way, the way they put it, it was like, I, I, they did it much better than me. And I thought, wow, like <laughs> wow. That, that is a great, sum, uh, you know, summation of <laughs> how deeply disturbed that code really is. And depending on how much they're going to censor some of these guys, there's two guys getting out. At, well, one guy's just got out or he's getting out. Okay. And another guy's going to get out within the next year or so. And you may or may not have heard, they're called the Gemini Twins. No. Um, there was a guy named Roy DeMeo who oh, ran a club called the Gemini time? Lounge. No, no, no. no they, they were mobsters. Oh. Roy DeMeo was one. Of, he was like a very, very brutal guy. I think the, the number of bodies that they said went down – and the bottom of that club and didn't make it back up was in the hundreds. Um, and the two brothers that helped him do it were called the Gemini twins. And one of them he either just got out or he's getting out like within a few weeks. And he's already said that he's starting a podcast and going to talk. Cause he didn't, he didn't give anybody up. He done, uh, I don't know how many years he done, but it was a lot. Cause it was well, a, lot not a pre- prerequisite by the way. Was that? It's not a prerequisite that you don't give anybody up. I gave everybody up. Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. Doing it. I mean, I'm, doing I'm, it. I'm making a go of it. I, I'm still trying to tell on people. Yeah, I want a probation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, if you got so, something you want me to tell, just just let me know. <laughs> so, so Matt, I got a question for this. Now, somebody tagged me and or actually sent me this the other day, and they was like, "You know this guy?" And it was a guy. He's actually from Charleston, and he runs right. a podcast. Decent amount of followers. He's got 154 thousand followers, and he told my story. Ooh. Using clips from Ian Vick's TikTok. Ooh. Every clip that Ian put up, which was like eight or nine. I don't know if he used every single one of them, but he used the majority of them. The whole video is like 15 minutes, but it's like he'll play me talking from Ian's podcast, but it's from the TikToks. I know because he puts the captions on it. It's not from his YouTube. It's me talking, and then he interjects, gives his two cents, and then kind of goes to the next one. And I commented on it. I'm like, bro, you're from Charleston. Like, you could have just interviewed me. You didn't have to steal another guy's shit. But, right. you know, I mean, I don't know how that would work because he didn't take from YouTube. He took from TikTok. Uh, you know, I bet, I'll bet you could complain about that and get something done. Probably. Yeah. You yeah. probably, it's probably, it would work. Probably, listen, it's, it's probably working to your advantage. Well, no, because he hasn't no. got my show tagged in there anywhere. Uh, so yeah, that's what that, yeah, that's. Yeah, that's jerky. Like, like yeah. you, you could at least throw my channel in there. 
I mean, yeah. I, dude, you got to think of it, man. You're in Charleston. He's in Charleston. He could have picked right. up the phone. He could look up contact information, anything else. The son of a bitch didn't. Does yeah, he have any he subscribers? Would. Yeah, he's got like 157,000. So Report his ass. Him. Con- no, well, I'm saying well, contact him and say, hey, bro, you're running my TikTok. Why don't you just interview me? Yeah. And then you if know. he doesn't, report his ass. Yeah. Yeah. Or <laughs> you do the, the mob thing. You tell him, say, I'll, I know a couple of guys that'll throw yeah. you in the trunk of a car, drive you around for 30 minutes before we even have a conversation. <laughs> or do his <laughs> show oh, yeah. and then Alleged. report his ass. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> so. A so. New favorite word. You know, so I have something else I have to say, just so that anybody who's made it this long, which is very few people, um, <laughs> that I, about a year and a half ago, I had, have you guys ever had anybody that have contacted you? Like, like, um, people that watch the show that contact you and said, Hey, do you mind if I run a TikTok channel for you? I noticed you don't have Instagram. I'll run the Instagram for you. And yeah. Yes? No, I have not. I, have. I wish they would. I've had people that uh, wanted to start up discords that wanted to do the shorts, all that. Yeah. So, so what, what happened with it? I told him no. Oh, well, I don't. Um, I typically <laughs> say, I typically I wish I had. Um, no, you know, what happens is they, they have good intentions. Just a 19 year old kid. He watches all my stuff. Like, and, and this has happened three or four different times. Okay. So, you know, they, they contact me, they say, man, I'm, I, I love your stuff. And, and then sometimes they'll send me a short or two, like I could start an Instagram for you, or I could run your Instagram. I noticed you haven't posted in a while, or I, I could do a TikTok. And I, I did, I had one kid start a TikTok. He really did great. Ran it up. It got to be, it got to be about 125,000 followers on TikTok. Okay. And then he just kind of disappeared, you know, and then. I mean, you know, we went back and forth a few times. He disappeared for a few weeks, came back for a week, disappeared again, uh, came back for a month, disappeared again, then eventually just went away. Right. And then he like wouldn't respond to my text. And I finally sent him some text saying, Hey, bro, at least give me the contact information. And then he just boop, like that just showed up. So it was like, okay, I get it. You know, and you're 19 years old. I understand. Yeah, all you have to do is say, listen, man, I'm just too busy. It was too much work. And I apologize. No problem. You right. ran it up to 125. So that one, I think we ended up take. Oh no, I know what happened eventually too he got it banned so it then for 10 days then they put it back up then it was fine again and then he posted something else and then it just it just banned it that's now what, what banned you from tiktok um a, a lot of my content um where we're cussing we're talking you know he wasn't beeping out like the names of drugs if you say specific drugs over and over and over again mm-hmm. it's got a problem with that if you say v- things about talk about violence um you know, any of the mob guys, when they're talking about whacking somebody and this and that, then I, I always go, I just start from now on. I just beep it. I just bleep right. it out. There right. goes it's half not my content it. right there. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> porn stars, there's not a lot of left to be desired. I know. The wholesome. All of your interests. <laughs> so listen, Jess is like, you know, Wade's in a way she's, I've been, I've watched a few of his stuff. She's like, he knows a lot about the mob. I mean, like everything. And I'm like, <laughs> right. Well, he really likes it. She's like, it's, it's a little disturbing. <laughs> but I, mean, said, I mean, and I went, why? And she said, I mean, it's like he knows everything. <laughs> she said, he's not a mobster. I'm like, no, he's like a welder or something. And she's like, right, I don't understand. And I go, he's fascinated by it. That's that's what's right. I said, you can tell me everything about alligators. And and, and she's like, well, I mean, they're alligators. They're amazing. And so I was like, okay, well, that's the same yeah. thing. That's I think I commented on a picture she had the other day where she's like standing on an alligator. And I'm like, oh, wow, know, that's that's an alligator you're standing on. There. I'm not sure if you knew that or not. <laughs> yeah. She listen. So we have, you know, you ever have date night? Yeah. So we have a whole day, um, which I still haven't managed to be able to do the whole day. Like I always plan something and she's like, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> and I'm like, it. It doesn't feel fine. It, it, it's fine. <laughs> you go ahead. I'm just gonna sit upstairs and watch and 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 look on TikTok. And no, you just let me know when you're re- when you're available for our day. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, uh, on our, the other day we had a day, and um, she said, "Well, we can do whatever I want." I said, "Of course, baby. Of course." She said, and she said anything. And I said, "Yeah, of course." And she said, "She says I want to go alligator hunting." Oh wow. I said, I'm, so, I'm, I'm actually embarrassed that I didn't think of that. That's the guy's, I, I've, I've wanted to do that forever. Like, 
bro, we went on an airboat for like four hours hunting <laughs> alligators. And I, I mean, in, 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 this is at night, they do it at night <laughs> in, in Okeechobee in the swamp. Listen, it was pretty, it was kind of cool for about 30, 45 minutes. It was four hours, bro. And then when they caught, they only caught one, which they were, she was furious about. And two, it was, it was only 11 feet. Only 11 feet. And we, the, listen, I can anyway, that's what I'm, that's what I'm dealing with. wonder what the percentages are of people's last words that were, I want to go alligator. Hunting. Exactly. <laughs> if you fell down. off the boat, you'd oh, never, you you'd never make it out. There are so many alligators. You wouldn't know where you are because there are these weeds that grow. You know, it's a swamp with weeds that are, they're 10 feet high. You would never know where you were. I mean, unless you could navigate using the stars and you're not going to believe that, believe this, but I'm not really an outdoorsy person. I, I would have never thought that. I'll never find it. I, I couldn't tell you which way anything was. And it doesn't matter. You wouldn't make it 30 minutes. There's so many fucking alligators out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, okay, let, let me. A lot of people problems are probably solved out there in those yeah. swamps, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I digress. So, anyway, I've, ha I've, I've had several people help me. With with um, oh, this is her. She knows I'm. So she stopped talking about her. She knows it. She's, okay, so <laughs> um, so I've had several guys do it on TikTok, and then the next guy that came out also guy was great. Mm -hmm. Ran the channel up to a hundred and like seventeen, eighteen thousand followers. Was doing great, and then his problem was his re his real job is he's a real estate agent, and he just got tired of guy I'm not tired I'm sorry he got really busy with real estate and then so we took it over and we started posting we're doing great okay and then we find out or then jelly smack do you guys know who jelly smack is yes i've seen that someplace okay jelly smack came in and they said look we want to take over your your right your um channel and we said great so we gave them the login and everything they're going to take it over and they're going to monetize it and they come back and they go this channel was started in canada I was like, yeah, the guy lived in Canada. And they were like, no, we can't monetize it because it was started in Canada because, you know, they're practically communists. And so they they wouldn't they wouldn't do it. Fucking Trudeau. Um, and and so uh, so now we had to start over. So I started another one over. Anyway, put that aside. So. But I had another guy contact me and also did wanted to do a clips channel. Okay. That guy started, he went strong for about three months, ran the channel up to like 3,500, 3,600. Um, uh, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, like 3,600, uh, follow or subscribers. And then he kind of disappeared and then he came back and then he disappeared and then he came back and then I said, just give me the login information and everything. So he just gave me the login information and I didn't post anything and it kind of went dormant for about a year. And then I just had a guy contact me the other day and said, look, man, I'll pick it up. I'll run with it. And now he's running with it. Um, and he seems pretty solid. Like, like the reason I say he's pretty solid is that one, he has a degree in film. He's not working in film, which bothers him. He's like, I want to work in film, but you know, I'm married, I have bills, and I'd like to make a go of editing, but I have no experience, you know, I have no way other than my degree. Like he's got a degree, got a job, regular job that started paying enough and kind of became complacent. And now he's been doing that for a while. Now he's starting to realize I'm going to be stuck in this job. Right. So I'm working with him and he's been cutting these things up left and right, left <coughs> and right, left and right and posting. And so we just started posting and our formula is take the best episode of the week and he's going to cut it up into three or four episodes or little 10, 15, 20 minute clips and we're posting those clips and i've kind of revamped what the channel looks like and we've been posting for about i don't know about a week okay uh, but i you know it i think and what i'm going to do is i'm going to start pushing it so i'm going to start pushing people to my normal subscribers like hey look you know if this the content's too long i have a clips channel that's just the best clips that we have the best stories please go to the clips channel and i also took the clips channel little icon you know mm -hmm. and i raise i don't know is that what you call it like the round picture mm -hmm. yeah. the profile photo whatever logo or whatever yeah logo. so 
I raise it up as high as you can. So my channel, my main channel logo is here. And then just below it, pretty much, and there might be a, some, a band between the two, is the Clips channel. And I've got like 150 new subscribers in the last two or three days. Sweet. Which, is, which isn't, you know, for a channel that's, it's not bad. Like it literally tomorrow, I would say it's going to have 4,000 subscribers. So I'm thrilled. Nice. nice. And we just All have these, to keep doing it. What? What's All that? these numbers that you're spitting out of these guys just starting these channels and getting 100 and some odd thousand subscribers makes me want to drink. I, I mean, <laughs> well, listen, as soon as we take it over, nothing like we're talking a, a few a day. Like it's, it's, right. it, it re, even though I feel like my stuff is, I, I feel like, you know, the problem is I just have really good taste and most people just don't. <laughs> and, and I think they don't appreciate it. And my, my wife is Jeff just was here. She'd be like, she'd be like, it's, it's amazing how you can take something like that. And turn it into a compliment. <laughs> to you. No one's watching my videos, and it's because they aren't doing. It. <laughs> right, they're not doing what they need to. Yeah. So if anybody's out there <laughs> wants to do some for me, I'll treat you to like a trip to New That's York, it. and I'll meet you if you introduce you to a few guys. We'll have a good time. You can run my channel because it's it's hard to do all of this. You're, I told you, I got the point. I'm just paying somebody to do it now. Yeah. Hell well, I mean, you're, yeah, but you know, we're not all ballers. <laughs> um, I'm not a, look at this ridiculous hat. I'm not a baller. So is it Randy Quaid? Randy Quaid. Yeah. Okay. I got to look up Randy Quaid. Yeah. Uh, Randy uh, Quaid. Uh, and of course, Brother Jimmy Quaid has the Dennis Quaid. On. Exactly. The Quaid yeah. boys are all right. So, yeah. you know, that he is just off his rocker, right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I seen Chevy posted a picture with him not too long ago. Though. Oh, really? Yeah, met up with him somewhere. Hell, he fell off a stage today somewhere. Chevy did. Oh, geez. Yeah. Um, vacation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Chris. You yeah, need Chris to watch vacation. that tonight. If you've not watched it this year, you need to get it in. You know, one of my favorite movies he was in was the bank robbery movie with Bill Murray. Quick Change, where he oh, was the that clown. Was good. That I was love good. that. I think that 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 plot. And I don't want to. I don't want to plan anything out for anyone. But it seems like that movie, the way they did it. If you want to watch it, go watch it. Could possibly work. Maybe someone should try that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, do you That's remember? What we'll do. Why don't you and I start a channel where we're reviewing films, crime films, and we'll like you know. What could work? What could work, and we'll like you know tell people to go out and try the shit, and yeah. then. See what happens. You know, be hilarious. I would love that. Die Hard <laughs> 3. I'm, I'm assuming you guys have watched the Die Hard. Oh, yeah. So I was watching a commentary of the guy that did Die Hard 3. And the premise of that is like a bomb goes off in the subway. It plays hell with the alarms. You have to kill the alarms. And they basically rob Fort Knox. Right. The CIA or, or somebody paid the actual writer, the screenwriter, a visit. And wanted to know how the hell he knew that that would happen because it was 100% accurate. Had it done that, they could have, they would have had to disarm the alarms long enough for somebody to go in there and do that. Now, obviously, you got an elaborate plan. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> wow. That's a sexy man right there. The similarities. <laughs> but he said that would have worked like that. That plan would have worked. And he was like, he said, I didn't know it. He said it was just kind of an educated guess. But I promise you, I'm not going to try to do it. But we know yeah, that's what it Frederick Forsyth d did that in a couple of his damn novels. Uh, Day of the Jackal. The guy creates the dead baby identity method with that book. And then there's another book he wrote about an art heist that walks through how to steal a painting. And a group of criminals followed it step by step and did it. Is that the big art heist? What in Boston? I don't. I Somewhere forgot where that was, but uh, it's it's Frederick Forsyth. He wrote uh, Day of the Jackal and a few other books as well. And I mean, fantastic author, but evidently he got the criminal mindset too. I think what that was about that one in Boston where they stole all them paintings and nobody ever got it, yeah, the Gardner the Gardner Museum heist? Yes, ah, yes, yes, right, right, right. You know what about the uh, Thomas Crown affair? I like so that. I have a buddy who who robbed a. Um, yeah, I want to say it was a, it was like a Loomis, uh, you know, whatever, you know, cash delivery truck for mm -hmm. like banks. Is it Loomis or who does that? Uh, Loomis does it. Absolutely. Yeah. Loomis. Maybe it was Loomis. It was one of those. And what he did was 
he put an ad in the it was in Seattle, Washington. Put an ad in the clean uh, in in the um. I know who you're talking about. He yeah, Anthony the, Curcio. Show up with the uh, the mask on. Yeah. So here's what he did. He he said it's the it was the for the clean up uh clean up Seattle Foundation, and they were going to pay like twenty five bucks an hour, and all you had to do was show up on this corner at this time. You had to buy, you know, one of those sweeper things that you sweep with. You mm-hmm. had to have a couple of bags, wear blue jeans, a long sleeve white shirt, wear the, a mask, a dust mask, and show up at the corner. And they said, if the, it, now the, the truck usually showed up around, let's say 10 o'clock. They said, he said, show up at like 930. And if the, if the, um, uh, whatever, if the supervisor doesn't show up by 10 o'clock, go ahead and start cleaning up. So it, this thing shows up. And he's dressed the same way. He's out there hanging out with them. And he's like, "Oh, did you, did you get the? Did you go to? Did you get the uh, the message in? Um, you know, whatever it is, uh, uh, in the ad or what? What, what is it? Uh, what is Craig that thing? List? Craigslist. And they're, right. and they're like, you know, oh yeah, yeah, I answered it too. Oh yeah. Well, I heard we were supposed to start cleaning up. So they're cleaning up, and then the Loomis truck like pulls up, <laughs> and they, so they're kind of spread out around the area. And by the way, there's like 22, 23 of them. <laughs> they're all over the place. And he suddenly the the guy jumps out with the bag of money. He has a, a can of mace, a bear mace. I remember that. I remember that. Walks up, boom, hits the guy in the face yeah. with it. Bam! The guy drops the bag. He grabs the bags, takes off running. <clears throat> so the cops show up and they're like, "What was? What do? You, what do he look like?" <laughs> the guy's in a white shirt. He, he had <laughs> pants. He had, they start ha- hand arresting all these guys wandering around. Is this him? Yes. Is that him? That's him, dude. So Didn't he have a raft or something in a, yeah, a like river a or something or some behind thing. the back, well, it, or like an inner tube or something. It yeah. started with it started with a jet ski, but the jet ski actually um, bottomed out when he was doing the the run through. Kind of, he ran through it uh, like a week ahead of time, and then he realized that the the it, the the path he was going to take with the jet ski was just too shallow, and he ended up bottoming it out and cracked it. And he's like, "Okay, this is no good." So then you're right; he just used an inner tube, and yeah. they were calling him. Um, what was it? Um, What's the guy that jumped out of the plane? Um, DB Cooper. DB, yeah, they're calling him DB uh, Tuber. <laughs> DB, DB Tuber. <laughs> they started following him, right? And they didn't arrest him right off the bat. They started following him, and he was wasn't he blowing the money a little bit? Yeah, he's. They know, always do. He was hooked on opiates, and you know he was. What, what ended up happening was one of the things that had happened was when he was running. He said he thought he's like I felt like I was really a far distance away, and he ended up throwing off the mask. Now keep in mind they don't have his DNA, so he's and he's not thinking of it anyway because he's thinking they're going to grab all these other guys. They're never going to realize that I took off this way. He had a whole way that he went where they won't find me. Well, you know, thirty FBI agents are going to find you. Yeah. And so they find the mask and they're like, well, we have no DNA to put connect this with, and it turned out because he had cased the place so well, he had. It, it had become a pattern and a homeless guy that slept in the alley noticed this guy shows up every couple of days and he, he always leaves right after that truck shows up and he leaves and then he folds up all his clothes and he keeps them over here. And so he thought, I feel like he's casing this bank. So he wrote his tag number down. Oh, geez. Oh, God. oh geez. So the, so the homeless guy at once he found out the bank had been robbed, he tried to tell like the police, he told like a, you know, an employee, like a city employee, and the city employee was like, get out of here, get out of here. But the city employee thought about it after the bank got, you know, heard the bank got robbed. This guy was trying to tell me about how he knew who the bank robber was. So he put in a report. The FBI gets the report. They go talk to him. He says, yeah, yeah, he was here. He had like this little ratty dog. So they said, they said, okay. He said, but I've never seen him before. They go, okay. So they got a bunch of hamburgers from Burger King and they went to where the homeless people were. And they said, does anybody know a guy? He's got a beard. He's an older guy. He's got a little dog. They go, oh, yeah, you mean Jimmy. Jimmy oh, uh, Jimmy sleeps in a bus, uh, a, an abandoned bus out there in the woods. So they go out to the woods where Jimmy is. And as soon as he gets there, he walks out. And he's like, where have you guys been? You're probably here about that bank robber. I got his license tag. That's how they got onto him. Damn. <laughs> so then they eventually grab something of Curcio's and they get the DNA of Curcio's DNA. They follow him around till they get something, get his DNA, match it to the mask. They go, plus we got the old man, the tag. I feel like we got enough. Right. Mm-hmm. And they grab him and arrest him and he, he's done. You know, once they question, they question one of his buddies, his buddy rolls over immediately says, yeah, I told him about, you know, I, I, he, one of his buddies worked at like Loomis. 
I don't know. I don't think it was Loomis, but it was like Loomis. Right. Told him about the whole thing. Yes, 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 yes. Rolled over on him. Fucking rats. I think um, he's got then, a picture with George Young in prison. He does. He was, okay. he was a Kelly. That, yeah. Okay. All right. That's, that's how I wound up coming across that story. And didn't he start writing books later, like children's books? Children's books. He now owns the largest Lego land. Um, other than Lo- Legoland, he has a huge warehouse filled with Legos. Wow. The other way. Overcom- I feel like he's overcompensating. Um, <laughs> writes children's books. Nice guy. And and, uh, and what's so funny about him is, he, like with George, I'm like, wow, George Young. I said, wow, that's so cool. He was your celly. He's like, yeah, he is total dick, by the way. He's like, I mean, really a jerk. And I was like, really? He said, oh, yeah. He said, I'm really obnoxious. He said, like, that movie makes him look like a nice guy. He said, he, he's not. Ah. He said, I don't think he ever was. Right. So was you like, know, I talked to George right before I started my podcast or started interviewing people. Right. And we actually exchanged number. I talked with him on the phone, and he told me he wasn't feeling well to give him about a week or two. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately, he wound up passing away. So I missed that opportunity to, jerk. to, See? to jerk. talk with him. <laughs> like, screw him. I'm dying. Yeah. <laughs> you could have had the George, the last George Young um, the balls interview. on this guy. Yeah, I, I had close to the last Tom Sizemore interview before he died. I like Tom Sizemore. I really I did, did too. I like his, his body of work as a film was was really good. Yeah, what a, that was a good bank robbing movie. They just kind of went on like cowboys, but it was good. What, what about um, Inside Man? You guys ever seen that? It's good. I yeah, that. I, like I love that movie. That movie. Yeah. yeah. I interviewed, he, he didn't have a huge part, but it was like the cop that went up and talked to Denzel when he got there. His name is Victor Calicchio. He actually co-wrote Summer of Sam with oh. um, Michael or uh, yeah, Michael Imperioli from The Sopranos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think Spike Lee directed it. Um, right, Spike Lee did direct that. Yeah. Yes. But Victor Calicchio, I think that's how you say his name, um, was in there. And uh, I've actually visited his house. He lives in New York. But yeah, that was, was a real good film. So, have you seen uh, Mezrine parts one and two or not? Who's that? Mezrine, M as in Mary, E S R I N E. You need to look I, both those films up. I don't even know. I've yeah. never heard of them. It's about a gangster overseas, uh, true story, but it's it's an extremely good film. Both of them. I'm sold. I'm sold already. Yeah. You, you had them at gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you, you guys heard of Joe Colombo, right? Oh, yeah. So still the Colombo crap. So I went and visited this week when I was up in New York. First time I've ever driven in New York, by the way, New Jersey. Um, I rented a car and went to his son, Chris Colombo's house. He invited mm-hmm. me to his house, which was Joe's house when he was alive. And that was that was pretty interesting just to oh, be in that house and see that and, you know, hear, the, hear him talk. And he does a, a sports gambling podcast because he was a big bookmaker. After He didn't go into that part of, part of life, but... I think he probably benefited from the connections, obviously. Right. And he was a huge bookmaker. And he'd done a show on HBO called, I think it was called House Arrest, where he was about to go to jail. And it just followed him around his house. And, you know, he had his ankle monitor on and shit. And he's got a lot of parallels to Tony Soprano. And I used a short with that not too long ago, where it was like he had the kid, you know, the boy and the girl, the house, right. you know, the animals and, you know, you know all that stuff. But it's it's pretty close to the parallels there Tony. that's all right that's all right yeah Um, jersey was crazy man driving up there i've never driven in in that area before that was a lot i was a little nervous they can't drive (laughs) or maybe it was i me that couldn't drive well somebody couldn't drive (laughs) so how how are your channels doing what's going on with who me? <laughs> Either one. Okay, of you. so so you know well, I, I, I didn't I, hire a film crew, so we'll okay, go. With I Brett. did, <laughs> I did, and and so so I hired. Uh, it's it's called Procast, is this company? And they're outstanding. I don't, I don't know how they're how they have any other clients because they're always talking to me by the hour. But but, but they don't need any other clients. So you know the, the owner comes in and she's she's talking to him and she's like you know I looked over your channel you've got all these videos of content you're coming across well but I don't know what your channel's about and I'm like I don't either <laughs> I was like you know it's it's been called a self help thing with uh, cybersecurity veneer and she was like look she said it's a good show you're 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 doing all right but what we'd like to do is split it into two different shows and I'm like. Okay, I'm not the professional here. You are. 
So uh, we now have criminal thoughts. And I got to be honest with you, man, the first episode hit 4,200 views. And I had never had a, a show like that that did anything like that. Nice. Uh, yeah, it, it went it went really nice. And uh, so now everything that's crime related takes place on the Criminal Thoughts show. The Brett Johnson show is basically, you know, you kind of a, whoever I want to talk to, you know, is what that is. Um, but the Criminal oh, Thoughts it- Still interviews on the Brett Johnson show. Still interviews, and I'll do an occasional solo show on on both platforms. But uh, so the Criminal Thoughts show we do, we interview criminals. Like tomorrow, I'm interviewing uh, Richard Midkiff. The guy is uh, he served 23 years in prison, gets out, and he he just he writes bills now for uh, to try to you know help with sentencing with with minors and things like that. So we're talking about that. Um, but we're, I'm going to be talking about uh, like Jonestown. So any type of past or present crime mm. is going to be subject fodder for criminal thoughts. Uh, meanwhile, the, uh, the Brett Johnson show is whatever I want to talk about. And uh, fortunately, I'm hoping to get a big bump from the Jordan Peterson show. So I, I was a guest on his show about uh, two weeks ago, and that's supposed to air late December. Yeah, so I remember bit. I talked to you. Said yeah. you were going up there. Yeah. Do you know how irritated I am right now? I said that to irritate you. <laughs> <laughs> what you had not been on there? If, if it makes you feel any better, he didn't say anything that that usually gets him in trouble. On the shorts, it was a two and a half hour. It was supposed to be an hour and a half. We went two and a half hours, and it was all counseling. Brett was what it was, but it was what? really good. Yeah, it was really good. He wait, he was counseling you? Yeah, it was like, you know, he's a psychologist, man. So it was like it was like a therapy session for Brett Johnson. We come in and we talk about the dark triad. That's how he starts. And then from there, it's just like bam, I mean, he's asking those hard questions. And it's like, holy shit, man, this guy knows his stuff. And it, we just dive into the psychology of Brett Johnson, cybercrime, everything else. And it was like I'm so it was irritated. Really, he's like, I am so irritated. It's gonna be good. I don't even feel like you you even know who Jordan Peterson is. <laughs> and I I have a, a deep understanding and an emotional connection. I cry sometimes when I listen to his stuff. It's so good. It's it so is booming. really good. <laughs> and I feel like you it's background noise. <laughs> You're not going to benefit off of that conversation anyway. <laughs> wow. Uh, if it makes you feel any better, when he got through that. talking to me, I didn't know if I was actually doing it, if I had done enough with my life yet. <laughs> now, that's the truth. And, and, you know, he looks at me at the end. He's like, so, you know, what would you, Jay? And he asks these questions. I can't say a lot, because, but but he asks these questions. I'm like, shit, I don't know, man. But it was it was really good, man. They flew me into, uh, we were filming in Phoenix. So they flew me in, put me up at, at a nice hotel for a couple of nights. And uh, the dude was all business. He 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 wore the uh, I don't know if you've seen the clips with it, but the Joker suit that he had made. No, he I wore that. The vest is a straight jacket. It was outstanding. Who who is this? Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson. He's amazing. Yeah, he's good. He's a professor. Um, he's a professor. A, a Canadian. A, a, oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you're talking about. Jordan Peterson. He does the whole. That's yeah. what he does. That's what he does. Well, let me think about this. First. I'll shoot you the link as soon as I know when it's going to air. Wow. So he interviewed Michael Listen. Francis. Are That's you serious? He did. Yeah. He did. I, I I need a I need an email. I I I tell you what, no shit about it. I will reach out to his production person and and give you the give him the contact information. Tell him I am truly disturbed. I will do that. Seriously. And there's no more that. honestly disturbed person other than you maybe you Brett you're <laughs> but you've got a whole I'm reformed thing going. <laughs> I am reformed. <laughs> or reforming. <laughs> Unless I mean uh, if you know someone that's got like 8000 bitcoins, we can go ask him some questions with a hammer and I'm sure Wade would go into that one too cuz he's all about that mobster bullshit. Uh, yeah, I mean 8000 bitcoins now we're talking. See? Unbelievable. Doesn't take a lot to sway me. <laughs> it's so depressing. Um, He's like, it's so depressing. <laughs> so I don't know. That got me all <laughs> fucked up. 
I talk. I you you talked about Julian the other day. I was why I watched his episode with uh, Sean Ryan. Okay, and I sent him a DM, and I was just like, "Hey, you know, enjoyed that show with uh, Sean Ryan." And he sends me something back, and he's like, "You know, how long you been following the show?" And I was like, "Like a couple months." I said, uh, "Matt told me about your show at CrimeCon," and I was like, "I said I've been on his show before," and I said, "I've been on Danny's," yeah. and Matt, he's who? like. No, no, he actually, he's like, he said, I think he said verbatim. He was like, love Matt, great guy, love Danny. He's like, wait, is this Wade? And I didn't tell him my name. It was from my crime and entertainment uh, uh, Instagram. And so he was like, is this Wade? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah. He's like, I know you. He's like, a great story. And I'm just like, wow. I didn't realize he knew who I was. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And um, Yeah, he's he's my go-to guy when I have a YouTube question. Yeah. Well, well, you told me that, and then when I was like, "All right, well, I'm gonna wait and let him talk to him and get some answers and bring him back to me," because I had so many clips from so many movies just fired up and ready to go, and I still may put them out on like TikTok and Instagram because I don't think you get in trouble there, but I'll probably refrain from sticking them on YouTube. Yeah. What What about another? You guys may have heard of this, and I don't know if you have any experience with it, but Opus Clips. Have you heard of that? No. No. Okay. So Opus Clips, and I think that's I think that's the name of it. Um, you make an account. It does. It is a monthly subscription, but you drop a video in there, hour and a half or whatever. Mm-hmm. You tell it how long you want the shorts to be, and it will completely cut them, caption everything, change the cameras. It will do a lot of the leg work for you. That's Opus it does, for other people's content. I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> but, <laughs> But that's like, ah, I like this. No, you drop your preferably your own videos in there, and it'll spit you out like 10 clips, and then it will have them in order of which ones are most likely to do best. So the yeah, first one obviously that. is going to be the best. And you I know a lot of people that use it because I think it might have something to do with the price brand, but like all the caption colors are the same. It's like red and green. The green, the captions are green and the red follows what they're actually saying. And I mean, they do, they do fairly well. And I thought about subscribing to that. I didn't know if any of you guys had ever heard of it, Um, but I'm always scared that, and not that I'm good at this, but they might not follow my vision, but at least if they pick out the the talking parts, I can just go and add some, some pictures or something (laughs) like that. Well, you know, your clips compared to the first few clips that you did, you know, your clips are, you know, phenomenal now. As oh, opposed I mean, to, I, like, I like what he did with me. I really did. Oh, I don't. I haven't. No, oh, no. I did see that one of them came up on my thing. But I'm saying the first time, when first when he was first doing it, he was just right. taking he was taking the, the the entire horizontal clip and just sticking it in the middle. Yeah. It's all black, uh-huh. and then he put like you know crime and entertainment up here, and then it be some other garbage down here it was just like what what do you do and like you got to spread it out you got and then he spread it out a little bit and i was like no what do you <laughs> and then i cut up a bunch and sent them to him he's like oh these are good i'm gonna post these i'm like no I, you're supposed to do those and yeah well i had never done great. i had never done like the horizontal stuff you know before and once i got it you know you have to play around with the cropping a little bit i don't use the same editing software that, that matt uses so he could only tell me so much right and right. then i had to play so basically and anybody that used davinci you drop a clip in there then you basically duplicate it and then crop it to where they just stack on top of each other okay and and then you can overlay the pictures and stuff on top i mean i've gotten pretty good at it now yeah but yeah it definitely. was a it was um it was a learning process but and still, I, like I said, of letting a computer generate it for me, I don't know if like like doing the show, I'll make little notes. Like, all right, that's a clip. That's a clip. I'll jot down times. Right. But I, 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 I do that sometimes. I need to do it. The other day, I half this, uh, like an hour into it, I thought, let me get a pen. Like I was so into the story and I was like, <laughs> yeah. what am I doing? We're now approaching an hour and I have, have, have there have been four or five different great clips and I haven't written any of them down. You know, and you could do it. I just sit here right here while they're talking and, you know, and I write yeah. down the thing and it at least gives me a, a an idea. Yeah. A time whole, frame to go to. A whole hour went by and I was like, bro, like you got to stop paying attention to these people. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I've got a week coming off for Christmas that my company's giving me. So I'm going to spend that time and just like upload a bunch of interviews, do a lot of clips. There you go. I don't have to worry about it for a yeah. while. Um, I, Matt, you remember William Steele? Of course. <laughs> so yeah, I stayed with him. Oh yeah, you stayed. Yeah. With him? He he went to he went to the film festival too. 
Okay. And it was his first time going back to Brooklyn, I guess, since he allegedly robbed the whole, you know, area blind when he was a locksmith turned thief, jewel and art thief. And so he hadn't been there in a long time and he had a place in Brooklyn. He's like, if you want to, you can room with me down here. Cause I wasn't staying but one night. The next night I was going to the Columbo guy's house and that <laughs> I swear to God, if I didn't know any better, I was like, he's just done at least, you know, a, a half a key or something like that out in the park. I mean, he was wide open, but he had said he just, you know, a lot of memories hadn't been back in so long. But yeah, well, we stayed together. And then he snores very loud. Too. <laughs> he looks like a snore. He is very much a snore. He was rattling the windows. And I almost slept outside in New York City. It was that damn bad. He, his podcast was one of those podcasts that I did that I thought, yeah, I kind of, you know, I, I like the podcast, but it's probably not going to do great. And then it was like, did great. And he, everybody just loved him. And he is a great storyteller. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's really good. He's funny, too. I mean, yeah. he said he didn't drink. And like, we went out to eat at some restaurant. And uh, I was like, well, I do drink. So I'm going to drink. I don't want to, you know, make you uncomfortable. And I, I told him I'd buy his dinner, you know, because he, he paid for the room. And he's like, you know what? I think I might have a drink. And he said it was the first drink he'd had in a long time. And then he did have another one right after that one. And then he called it quits. <laughs> and around 2 in the morning, they asked us to leave the strip club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> you got to put your pants on and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a high strung individual, but uh, he he was fun, and he was he was doing like little interviews there at the film festival, and I'm just like, I never go quite that far. Like, I'll do some photo ops now because I know a lot of these guys, but I don't do like many interviews. And I mean, right. and one of them he messed the guy's name. I was like, okay, we'll start it over, and I'm just like, I don't want to hold the camera for this. They'll probably get pissed off. <laughs> um, gosh, what was I gonna think? I, I was. It, this was a. This is kind of random, but I was thinking about Julian because I went and I stayed when I went up to Julian's, by the way. So Julian was like, hey, I'm going to have you back. I, I want to do another part to your story. The, the second part, I was like, oh, OK, yeah, that's fine. That's like I, I, I thought we'd done the whole story, but we'd only gone so far. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. And he goes, I'll fly up. And I said, um, I said, OK, uh, I said, well, bro, you're going to like put me up in a hotel or something. He's like, nah, bro. He's like, I got you. He said, I got a place for you to stay. No problem. I said, oh, OK. And and then I got there and he had an air mattress on the floor. And I was like, <laughs> I got 54 years old, bro. <laughs> you know what an air mattress might do to me? Uh, you were in prison. They don't even those those prison mattresses suck. You'll be fine. No, he didn't. That. But I was just like, no, no, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm, fine. I'm fine. And then you know what he did to me too? We we went and we we had dinner and we started walking, right? Like back to the back to his place. And we were walking, we were walking, and then we went down a you know the street, and then we walked by, and I thought, oh, we're going a different way. And so, like an hour into the walk, and when we walked the restaurant, it was like fifteen minutes, and, what, and after, like roughly coming up on an hour, I went. He goes, okay, let's turn around and head back now. And I go, I go, wait, what do you mean head back? And he <laughs> goes, yeah. He said, I said, I thought we were going back to the apartment. He said, we are right now. I said, where have we been going? He said, we've just been walking. <laughs> this is what I do. I said, what's well, not what I do, bro? I'm tired. I'm on a plane at six o'clock this morning. Like I thought we were going home. I ate too much. I wasn't asleep. I'm tired. <laughs> I'm an old man. I have to pull up my mattress. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's funny because then Danny is good friends with Julian. So I'm talking to Danny about the, I forget the clips or something. I know what I was talking, talking to Danny about, but he said, well, you know, Julian says this. I was like, yeah, okay, well, listen, this is what I'm thinking. And he goes, well, Julian says this. And he goes, you know, Julian's my go-to guy for YouTube. I'm like, yeah, I know he's my go-to guy for YouTube too. I said, but I said, he's, I, I go, he's also a New York liberal. I said, and we can't listen to him. And he said, <laughs> and, he said <laughs> and he goes, and Danny said, Danny started laughing and didn't say anything. And then two days later, when I talked to Julian, he said, I mean, I know you don't want to listen to anything this New York liberal says. Oh, but, and Danny oh. told me one time, if he ever got caught, he wouldn't rat on anybody. He kept <laughs> dry snitching. He that just dry snitched snitching. on me. That get, that's a name with the people I talk to. They call that a name for people like that. <laughs> what? Oh, my God. He wouldn't hold water. <laughs> and he, he stays in the city, I'm assuming, like Manhattan area. Yeah, Julian's got a great. I don't know if you know. Do you know Julian's story? I kind of told. I tell Julian's story better than Julian does. 
So I told you. I, I don't know his story. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You did. Yeah, 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 yeah. About I, living, just quitting his job and starting the channel. Listen, it's a, it's, yeah, he, this is a guy who, so he, he graduates like, you know, like an Ivy League school. Mm -hmm. You know, I throw stuff in there that I'm not sure about, but it sounds good. Um, and so when I told Julian his story uh, to him, I said, tell me how much of this I have right. And he goes, okay. And, and I told him the story when I was done. He's like, to be honest, you tell it way better than I do. He said, <laughs> you got one or two things wrong. He said, and he told me, really, I was super close. Um, but so I said, so he went to like a, did all the right things, right? You know, goes to college, goes to school, goes to college, does really well, gets a degree in like finance or something, gets out, gets a job at one of these hedge funds, works under a guy for like five years, does really well, lives in the city. Um, and he's at that point where his boss is like, okay, we're now going to make you like a, kind of like a, whatever, like a team leader where he'd have guys underneath him. Right. He's at that level. And so they offer him the position and he said, okay, let me, well, you know, let me think. And this is what he'd been working for the whole time. Mm -hmm. Let me think about it. He goes home to his parents' house like that night. You know, when I say that, he's like, it was a couple nights later. And then, you know, those are little things like, and I said, so he goes there and he goes to his parents and he says, listen, and he tells his dad, his dad's like, oh my God, that's great. Like that, that's, that's great. He says, what you've been working for. He said, I know. He says, like, that's great. So when is, what you going to do? When is this going to happen? He said, so I thought about it and I want to, I'm going to quit my job. He said, I want to sell everything I have. I want to move back in the spare room. And I want to turn back into my old bedroom and I want to turn your guest bedroom into a studio. And I want to start doing YouTube. Like his dad's never heard anything about a YouTube dream. His dad's like, what? Like we're 150,000 grand into student loan debt. No, um, no and, but he's like, he's like, what? He's like, yeah. And his dad's like, uh, I don't. You know, he's like, no, listen, I've really been thinking about this. I've been studying the algorithm. Like his dad doesn't know anything about an algorithm. Like what's an algorithm? So he starts telling him, he explains it. And his mom's like, oh my Lord, you know, she's doing the whole thing. What's happening to my baby? So uh, he convinces his dad, let me do this. Just back me. Let me stay in the spare room. I'm selling everything. Let me do this for two years. In two years, I think I'll have enough subscribers and enough uh, followers that I'll be able to get a place in. He doesn't, he lives in, what is the one next to New York? It's like Newark or is it? New Jersey, Newark, New, New Jersey? Jersey, like it's right yeah. across the river. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can take the water taxi right to the other side. Right. So, yeah. he, so he's like, I can move there, get my own a studio. He said, I should be good. His dad's like, I mean, if this is what you really want to do, yeah, of course you can move back in. Of course. And he's always so he sells everything, goes to his girlfriend, tells his girlfriend who's been sticking by him, you know, and says, look, this is what I'm going to do. Like, and, and that's it. I'm going to be doing this all the time. And I, I don't think we should, you know, see each other anymore and breaks up with her. And it just, you know, crushes her. So when I got to that point, um, Julian said, actually, I'd only been dating her maybe six months. Anyway, it was never going to work anyway. He said, but go ahead. He said, I love your version. So, <laughs> so he does, he moves in with his parents, sells everything. Like when I went to his house, when he picked me up at the airport and I went to his house, um, he, he like, he borrowed like his mom's car. Like he didn't have a car at, at that oh, wow. point. Um, and really did. He said, oh, I liquidated everything, sold everything. I had some money saved, obviously. He said, I, I've lived off that for two years, invested everything in YouTube, taught myself how to edit, taught myself everything, did the shorts. This guy's got four, 500,000, so maybe 600,000 subscribers. He he had like 350,000 or something when he called me after about, about so I think maybe he lived with his parents for maybe two, three years, I think. Right. Uh, and then got the apartment. Um, and, um, when he got the apartment had just kind of moved in there a month or two beforehand and contacted me. And that was the third time that I went out. And this is a guy whose YouTube pays all of his bills, right? He's banking. You know, I'm sure he thinks, I'm sure he, what he thinks is making good money. What I think is making good money or is the difference between living in New York, good money and Florida. Good. So Florida, he's making great money in New York. He feels like he's barely getting by, but he's really making good money. So yeah. he, um, yeah. So, I mean, that to me is so, it, it, it really is that kind of Gattaca. He's 100% all in. I'm not saving anything for the swim back. Yeah. It's all or nothing. And There's I, no plan I, B. yeah. Now, granted, he is a young kid. He could have turned around. I'm sure he could have gotten another job. I mean, he's got to, but you know what I'm saying? It is, it's, 
like he, but he said, he said, you know, I knew like, if I take this job, like, this is it. You're stuck. Like, I'm going to end up married with a couple of kids. And this, he's like, and I, I didn't like the job. Like I, I, after he's like, after four or five years, he's like, I realized like, I can't do this the rest of my life. So I, I thought, and that's why I, I just thought what I thought the motivation of being able to do that and knowing that and having the, the forethought and realizing I'm going to make this sacrifice. And, and if it doesn't work well, then I could do something else. But I'm young enough to do it and to do it, and it's working for him. Right. That I that I listen that. That's nice. That's a yeah. great story. Yeah. When it works, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when it works, it's nice. When it's not, I well, you're told you one that didn't work. I got four guys that are, that are in the living in the street right now. You don't hear me talking about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't work. You're giving hand jobs for cash. <laughs> Those yeah. You don't hear about Bobby. <laughs> Tell you about Bobby. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, it's a good story though, right? So yeah. it worked. No, I, I like that. I mean, I and I, I've often like to, I don't make nowhere near enough on YouTube to even look at possibly looking at that as being my final job. But I've often like hoped and dreamed that if it got to that point to where you could, it's similar. Like if I would stick with the career that I'm I'm doing now, it would be it would be a tough choice. I love doing this. I love meeting the people. I love going to places and you know, talking to people and stuff like that. But I've often wondered if it did get to that point, you know, we might have to make a choice. Well, I think it, it it's kind of the Gary V thing where he's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta turn your, if you can turn your hobby into your job, then that's, right. or your career, then that, that's the, obviously that's the goal. Yeah. Um, I, if I had somebody that could do the damn editing, it would be a lot off because I love doing the interviews. I love talking to people. I love doing all that. It's just, I'm having to do it all. I'm having right. to do all the editing for the shorts and the, and it's not just one platform you post to is TikTok, it's Facebook, it's Instagram. And, and I mean, it, it, it can be a lot and I can get sleep on the couch quite a few times, not because I want to, because I'm made to. Um, I was just going to say, how's your wife with that? Cause mine's not yeah. okay with it. Oh, mine all. hates it. It hates it. Like with a passion. Yeah. She's not, she's not good with it at all. My, my I'm only lucky that I get to say this is paying our bills. And she just, <laughs> yeah, I can't even say off. that. I can't. So even I'm, say I'm that. lucky. I have that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have that. Yeah, I can't. I can't even say that at all. <laughs> but you but, know, you don't know. You don't like. I, I mean, you know. Look, last year this time, I had fifty-five thousand subscribers. Yeah, you've all, you've doubled. What have you got now? Year, man? More than double. Uh, as of right about an hour ago, one hundred seventy-five. Not that I look at it every hour. Um, one hundred seventy-five thousand uh, subscribers. Uh, yeah, I remember when we when I done your show, which was in like February, I think of last year. It's coming up on a year anniversary of of me doing it. I think you were at like you had just broke the seventy thousand mark. Oh, okay. Had I? Okay, cool. Yeah, well, and, and, and within oh February, I think two or three months <laughs> after that, you were already above a hundred. It's nice. I yeah, like, well, I, mean, I should have waited a couple months. <laughs> I had. Wait, I mean, yours is one of my better videos. It's got almost like a hundred thousand. Does it have a yeah. hundred? Yeah, it's it's like ninety eight or something. It's right at a hundred. It's it's close. Nice. Um, yeah, I I mean I had I had one video that really I mean for my channel it was huge. Like it, it's got like eight hundred thousand. Was Hicks Hicks, and then as that one was going down, like a couple of other ones that had actually been out started shooting up. Um, actually, um, Brett's is one of, the, of those that had. Maybe sixty thousand subscribe, uh, sixty thousand views at the time. Maybe seventy, mm -hmm. and then I think it's got like two hundred thousand now. Like it just so that's and we're talking about we're not talking about like a month later, right? It was it was months. Like it was like three, four, five months later. It just suddenly started going. And remember, I was even like, "Did you do anything? Right? right. Did something yeah. happen? You're like, no, yeah, just no. People but yeah, I don't to, know. A lot what of times, the people hear a story. And then they just type in that person's name if your episode comes up. Because a lot of the time when I went on like Ian's show and even that guy that, that I said stole his TikToks, um, somebody even commented to him, uh, I heard this story, you know, earlier this year, it was on Matt Cox's podcast. Right. So a lot of them, a lot of them reference your podcast over Danny and, and some of the other ones that I've been on, but it, mostly it's yours or, or concrete. That's probably what will happen when the Jordan Peterson show airs. The comments will say, hey, I saw him on Matt Cox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Take the drive and traffic any way you can get it. 
200 <laughs> Brett's has 222,000. Nice. So it went from like 70 or 80,000 to and this is months later. So that would that be really one, good I had for you a, too. Yeah, and I had a few others that all of them started doing that. And then so I, that's where I, that bulk of subscribers came to over the over the course of like three or four months. I got like 100,000 new subscribers. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Michael Dowds did pretty good for you. I watched that one with him. I think he's uh, – he I haven't really talked to him about that, but I think he's doing something finally with his life rights. When I talked to him in New York about two years ago or a year and a half ago, I think he was on like the second person that had optioned his life rights. And then, you know, if they don't do anything with it during a certain amount of time, he gets it back and he can right. sell it again. Right. Um, and so I think at that point in time, it was sometime this year that it was set to expire if they didn't do anything with it. Um, so what, what do people get when they say any of you guys ever sold your life rights? Not yet. N- no, but I've sold other people's life rights. I know that sounds <laughs> fucked up, but it's oh, yeah. it's actually legal legally. Um, how, how the hell do you sell? I mean, they give you permission. I, wrote a story. I own the rights to their story. I wrote a story, and then when I would these guys in prison, when I would say, "Hey," they'd say, "Hey, man, I want you to write my story," and I'd be like, "Yeah, cool, I'll do that." Here, sign this document, <laughs> um, and I would and I'd say, "I'm going to attach your life rights to the story that I write, so that if I get out of prison and I sell it." I also get to sell your life rights. And they'd be like, oh, I don't know about that. It doesn't sound right. And I go, well, let's say you've Here's been a bag of keefy coffee. Right. <laughs> like, you've been locked up eight years. You've done nothing with your life rights. I'm, I'll write your story and I'll make an, an active effort to sell it. There you go. What are you doing when you get out? And they're like, well, you know, my, my brother-in-law Breaking works law Walmart. Again. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going back to Piggly Wiggly and yeah. So it's like, okay, so you're probably not going to be in that market. I'm going to try and be in that market. So I would have them attach their life rights. So I have the op- the ability to, to sell them. And I've optioned several guys' life rights. And who do, you, uh, who do you option to? So one of them was optioned to Warner Bro- Now, this one I was just a part of. Does that right. makes sense. Um, because I'd actually made the mistake of sending my story to a to a reporter that that I knew was going to get it into Rolling Stone, but I was supposed to be one of the, one of the writers. It was going to be with he and me. And the last minute he took my name off. Of course. And and he just included it in the story saying, Oh, this is the guy that sent me the material. But really I sent the story that you just published. Yeah. Right. Just scumbag move. But he did cut me in on the, the sale of the life rights. That's the easiest way to say it. The way it didn't, it's longer than that. But the point is, is that that one got sold for like 50 grand. Okay. And then it was optioned three times and they just re-optioned it about a year, a little over a year ago. They optioned it for, um, for about 60 grand. So, so, um, um, hold on. It's a, a Warner brothers optioned it three times. And then like, I want to say what, why do I want to say like AMC, uh, studios or G, 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 GMC, G, AMC's G1? Turner Classic, mm-hmm. something other. I think AMC is a studio. Well, I, I don't know. Another studio optioned it again for like 60 grand. And I only know that because the guy didn't talk to me because I threatened to sue him. So uh, I just get a check, but this check was larger than the other one. Now I only get uh, like seven or eight grand or like okay. seven grand for it. So I got like six grand wow. the last time, then seven. But hey, that really, I really needed that money and it came in handy and I was thankful for it at the time, even though I still hold some resentment. So, right. but I've also optioned other stories, right? Like I've optioned, um, uh, John Boziak's story has been optioned a few times. Uh, and then, you know, but the other options have been small, like, like 3000, like $3,500 or, um, uh, what was one was like $1,800 or $2,500. They've been small. You know, you option them for about 18 months. And if they don't do anything with it, now keep in mind, you sell the option. If they make the movie, then they give you like whatever your deal you worked out, which is like right. half a million dollars or 400,000. And then you get a piece of the budget and right. you get other things. So it might be half a million to a million dollars. Who knows? Mm-hmm. It's not millions, what people think, but, um, and I've done the, and so then in 18 months, they have the, a, they have the option to re-option it for another 18 months, but they have to pay you again. Yeah. Once they make the movie, obviously they pay you half a million or whatever your deal is with them. But of course, you know, Hollywood options, you know, hundreds of these every single year that, and they only make three of the three or four movies a year, each, each studio, right. and that, but they might option 
a hundred of these, mm-hmm. you know, so it, the likelihood, you know, that your options going to get picked up right away is, is, you know, it's, you know, it's not great, but, but there are guys that have made an entire career out of just optioning. Yeah. You know, that's what I was going to, so who actually do you submit it to for people to look at? I guess. Yeah. Well, question. first, obviously you need something <laughs> written, right? Okay. Typically you, you want it written and you want to publish it somewhere. So you put it on like, that's why all my stuff is on my, um, is on my website. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you want to copyright it. Not that it means anything is publishing. It is a form of copywriting, mm-hmm. but still it's nice to say, Hey, I've copywritten it. Um, so I copyright them. And then what happens is you can go to different production companies and tell them, look, I have a story I'd like to pitch to you. And they'll put you on the phone and you can send them the stuff and they'll read it. And you, you might hound them for a little bit, um, you know, or they'll reach out to you. A lot of people, because of my channel, a lot of producers reach out to me and will say, hey, look, you know, um, you know, I, I watched the, the Brett Johnson uh, episode you did. He's great. Can you give me his information? I'm like, oh, Brett's fine. Have you seen mine? Uh, my story? <laughs> uh, it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Brett's doing all right. He's fine. He's actually already optioned it. I'm so sorry, but yeah. mine is available. <laughs> so, so what happens is like, like I got contacted by a producer for, um, Jeff, uh, is it, um, Jeff Turner, the, the counterfeiter. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, they contacted Jeff and then Jeff, uh, called me like a week later. He's like, Hey man, those these people contacted me and I was like, right. And I was like, I, I know, right. Cause I gave him your number and, and I, but I was like, okay. And he was like, and he said, yeah, they're, they're saying they want me to, they sent me something to sign. And I was like, Oh, did they? He's like, yeah, that's an option. And I went, okay, send it to me. So I read it and I came back. I said, call them back and tell them you, you that you're not signing an option for no money. Like, so I, I kind of worked with him and we negotiated. I, I want to say it was like, well, anyway, that's his business, but right. we negotiated a decent, little option and it was really for only like 12 months and they wrote a screenplay they hired someone to write a screenplay oh, wow. they've optioned it again since then um i think i talked with him because i had him on right after they optioned it the first time oh okay yeah i might have been around the time he did glad too i think somewhere along that neighborhood yeah yeah he's 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 got a great story he's oh, got yeah. a good story for for uh brett probably too yeah um, it's oh, counterfeiting yeah. he's counterfeiting huh I'm a dollar bill to that dude. Yeah. 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 I mean, he was counterfeiting, uh, you know, hundred dollar bills and he was using, uh, um, you know, Bible paper. Yes. Bible paper, Bible paper. Not so. He, yeah. He would like, you know, glue them together and right. put the strip in and everything. And, and he got charged and the secret service, they, they flew in a team and a fi- film crew for him to show them how he did it. And he got a reduction in his sentence for it. Oh, a massive nice. one. That's nice. pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. Yeah, he was so, pumping out, I think, in the millions uh, around the, the Tennessee area. And yeah. he had a great racket, too. He would, like, sell them to drug dealers, like, sell them 10 grand of fake money for three grand of real money. It's not bad. Yeah. No. Yeah, bad. He was also going into stores. And too, yeah. You know, he yeah. was also going to stores and giving. It's so funny because he has film that he he put out where you he's at the counter and gives them the bill. And they're like, oh, that's really him? Yeah, I there's. That. I didn't yeah, know that was really him. Oh. <laughs> you can see him kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy, they put it in there and give him the change. He's like, <laughs> he should kind of walk on. <laughs> so, uh, but he's he's got a uh, he's got a good story. He did. He had a good hustle. Like that was, yeah, that was that was actually a, a really good story. Yeah. All right. Um, mean, so you, you guys know, need to hook me up with some of these really good stories. Oh yeah. Well, I still need to hop on your show too. Yes, yeah, I, and let's. I need both of you on there. I'm going to reach out. I mean, who wants to come on first? Now that uh, I've got this new thing launched, criminal thinking is the one I would be good at. Criminal thinking, exactly. He's not really a criminal, but he his story would be outstanding because right, that would be like the Brett Johnson the, he did get caught up in the justice system, and they almost yeah. screwed his ass over. Yeah, I very guess close. That. And oh, no, I, I listen. If I had to, if I ended up getting arrested, thrown in jail, had to bond myself out, pay an attorney to fight the case, I feel you did get screwed over. Not right. as bad as you could have, right? Yeah, could have. It could have definitely went worse. Yeah, for sure. And that's the thing. Even when I have a lot of people on the show now, like you know, guests and stuff, really don't have a clue even now about 
my story because right. I never talked about it on my channel. Like I've never done an episode on crime and entertainment about what happened to me. I've you, only talked about it with you guys. Are you open during the day at all or not? Wait, not, not Monday through Friday. Okay. Typically okay. sometimes Friday. I don't work some Fridays, Okay, all but right. I am going to have a week of the week of Christmas from Christmas to new year's. And I don't know what you're, I'm going to be off that whole week. Do you want to plan on recording sure. that week? Are you okay during the, yeah. that time? Okay. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. What about you, Matt? I don't have a job. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you're recording a show. You you put out these shows like every friggin' day. I I, I you know you know the, the the problem is I schedule like seven or eight of them a week and only right. like four. Yeah, okay, I'm having that trouble right now. I've had two or three of them cancel on me this week, and like part of me is upset, but then sometimes it's like, yeah, I yeah. didn't really want to. Not that I didn't want to do it, but I didn't. You know, it was, I had some other shit I needed to do anyway. Right. Matter of fact, one of the guys that rescheduled, Matt, I think you had him on your show not too long ago, and I can't remember his last name, but he was doing like the poker machines or something like oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Schiffner, machine. Schiffner, yeah, yeah, the machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the machine. Yeah, he, he had, Ball, or what, the, what the hell's his name? What's his real name? I can't I don't remember. Know, I name. forget, but he, he, he's a good, he's a good storyteller too. Yeah. I like I, yeah, I listened to his show on, on your your channel and uh yeah he well, we had to reschedule he said he wasn't feeling well but yeah i've had quite a few people reschedule here lately well then what i'll do is we'll plan on me and you wade uh recording that that christmas week like that mm -hmm. matt i'll reach out to you tomorrow and we'll set some sort of day where we can do that okay yeah that's cool like that. i want to have matt back and and cover like we covered everything well not everything but um most of the stuff that he did until he got caught i want to hear some jail stories Oh yeah, I got. But, I don't have any like shankings or anything. No, like, no. I just that's story. the thing is it doesn't. Yeah, that's what I want. Funny stories because coming from you, they're going to be hilarious. So that's he does what have I some great stories. He yeah. really does. I was going to say it's like uh, every one of these channels that all, all the stories are nothing but fights and the gangs and the this. It's like come yeah, on, yeah. I want to go oh. opposite of that. Yeah, there's like the, the, if you're involved in that stuff, it's because you're involving yourself in it. Like right. you don't have to do your time right. that way unless you're maybe a pin or something. And I know guys that were in pins that like they weren't involved in any of that kind of stuff. Right. So and I, and I try to change it up a little bit like that. Like I have this lady on. Um, I don't know if you guys are big horror movie watchers. Oh, yeah. The, the Night of the Living Dead that they remade from 1990. Remember that with Tony God it. in it? Yeah. So is that the, the one the, where they were in the in the mall? No, no that's it's the one where we were in the did. basement. Yeah, they were they were in a, basically a farmhouse. Tony right. Todd, the guy that would go on to play Candyman later on, right. uh, the the female lead was Patricia Tallman, and I interviewed her. And I didn't know until I started looking at her IMDb, she was a stunt woman as well as an actor. So oh. she is a stunt woman in like Jurassic Park, Speed, another forty eight hours, like a slew of them. And so I was asking her questions about all the ones that she actually did stunts for. And she's like, you know, are you sure you want to hear the story? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that. Like, I, I knew every scene she was talking about, like Long Kiss Goodnight. She was a stunt double for Gina oh, Davis. Okay. And so I knew like every one of these scenes she was referencing. I was like, I had no idea that was you. And she's like, I'll go in. I'll be flew in for one day. That film Shocker that Wes Craven did yeah, when the yeah, guy yeah, got yeah. electrocuted. She was like the, the nurse that went up and checked on him right after he got electrocuted. <laughs> but you don't know because the close-ups is obviously the other person. But I thought that was a very cool interview. And then yeah. obviously we talked about Night of the Living Dead, which was which was really good. One of my favorites. You a horror movie fan, Matt? Oh, dude, I am. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really, except for the fact that, that I don't consider like Night of the Living Dead you know, that's a zombie movie. Like, yeah. I love zombie movies. I love Walking Dead. I love, okay. like, World War Z. I love oh, yeah. uh, Legend. I am Legend. I'd read the book when I was in, in uh, prison. Did you so, watch the one we're talking about from 1990 with Tony Todd in it? I, don't, I may. I don't think so. It doesn't ring a bell. It's really good. I mean, they made the first one, what, in the late 60s? Yeah, the first one was black and white. George Romero did it, which he done a lot of the early zombie movies. Right. And then he done Dawn of the Dead, where they're in the mall, the one you were referring to. Right. And I think he did Day of the Dead as well. And they redid Day of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. And Tom Savini, who's like a really good makeup artist, he done makeup for about any horror movie you watched through the 80s and the 90s. He actually uh, directed Night of the Living Dead. I didn't even know that until I started uh, not too long ago. 
Yeah, that's, I'd like to interview him one day. He seemed like a cool dude. Yeah. Just anybody doing all that makeup stuff for all the horror movies. And he was the g- guy in From Dust to Dawn. He was a sex machine. And from Dust with, the, with the special pistol. Yeah, with the pistol. That, yeah, yeah, the special <laughs> pistol. <laughs> yeah, Brett, we need to do a show about the movie. Because <laughs> Matt's over there like, oh, yeah, I don't know. That's like, what the hell is this? Have you seen the new that. Exorcist, by the way? Did you just yes. sit through that POS? Yeah, the, with the two girls? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't a big fan. No, nah, it, it's like they did the first one right, and everyone passed that. It's just like, what the hell is going on? Well, every I, I time like, they remake something, they seem to ruin it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the Night of the Living Dead was one of them that they didn't ruin it. It's st- that one still stayed good and, and held up. And um, I like both Dawn of the Deads. That's the one with in the mall. Yeah, yeah I like both ver- versions of that. Yeah, but you're remaking a B movie. Well, that's true. You make with another B movie. That's true. So I'm yeah. talking about like you know when they remade like a uh, um, what was it? Oh gosh, a Total Recall. You know, yeah, that was garbage. Like was you have garbage. a a stick with the script. Yeah, you know well, the only Michael, ones I've seen. Him, what? Go ahead. I, was I was gonna say, say Michael Bay made a killing doing that with his show's uh, production company Platinum Dunes. Probably like the early two thousands, they went and remade like every horror movie there was. They went and remade The Hitcher. They remade The right. Hills Have Eyes. They done the the other Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Right. It was like every horror movie from the eighties. He just went through and done a reboot, and he was making a killing doing that. And some of them are good. Most of them are shit. I, was gonna say, I mean, I like Harley Texas- Army. <clears throat> Texas. Yeah. 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 I was going to say the Texas Chainsaw one was good. Yeah. But, you know, another one that was um, good was the remakes of the Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, those yeah. are good. Except for the one with Walmart. Um, But uh, and then I, I we listen, this was in prison. We literally would have week long discussions where, you know, you're you're like changing. Did, did they have um? Um, moves do they have the the moves in the prison you know the it was a lockdown facility where you they had the the 10 minute, yeah, moves. 10 minute moves yeah All right so you'd see somebody in another unit and you'd walk by them they're they're leaving the rec yard and you're leaving your unit you're walking by each other and, and 20 minutes 20 feet as you approach them 20 feet away you start the discussion right and i and you and i'd say you know what would make a good remake and they'd be like what did i go you know i'd say um, you know, escape from New York, and they go, Where's he gonna land? Where's he gonna <laughs> land? I do, they'll come up with something, they'll come up, and we'd walk by. They, they have the technology now to do it right, and it's a B movie. And then, you know, we just keep walking. And then, I and then at, just as they're leaving, you'd hear him scream something like, Um, Capricorn one. <laughs> and then, so then on the way back, you know, you'd walk by and I'd be, that'd be an amazing remake. Oh my, you know, OJ Simpson was in that. Who would play OJ? Man, I don't, you know, you, those kind con- and they'd go on for weeks because you might not be in be, right. that guy. Right. You might not both be on the rec yard for a week. And then right. that discussion would take on a whole new thing. But yeah, Capricorn one, what a great movie that would be as a remake. I don't know if you ever saw it. It is. It's good. Um, uh, what else would be great? Capricorn one. Um, oh, Oh, wait, wait. Um, oh, I just watched, I made Jess watch it the other day. She hated it. Um, it was great, which makes it even better when I make her watch something that she really just despises. <laughs> it really lets me know how much she loves me because when she makes me do something I don't want to do, I'm miserable. And I let her know I'm miserable. I'm miserable. She said, well, you're going to sit here because I watched 2001, three fucking hours. Oh, that's a great <laughs> film, man. I'm like, that's a great film. And she's like, she's like, I, I'm like, you have no appreciation. Don't even talk to me. But, um, <laughs> Uh, Logan's Run. Yeah, why haven't they remade that? Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Did, I thought that, did they not remake that? No, they, no, there were plans to do that with the uh, the same team that did uh, Westworld, but it never okay. got off the ground. Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, it was actually three books. I didn't know that. I read all three books in prison. I had that kind of time. <laughs> they weren't great. Um, <laughs> great. And it, it wasn't, wasn't Ender. No. And it, it, it was, and listen, <laughs> it, you know, in the in the movie, it's they're in a domed city. Right. In the books, it's the whole planet. Like there's no dome ah. city. And in the books, it's the age 21. But when the movie was coming out, they decided because the new the catchphrase was don't trust anyone over 30. So they oh. said 30 is better and it makes more sense because you could have contributed to society. So they went with 30. There were these little subtle changes. Right. Um it, it, either way, the exact movie. Just with today's technology and a little bit of updating the script a little bit yeah. would make a great 
remake. Yeah, it would really. I keep hearing rumbling that they're talking about remaking Scarface. And I just feel, even though Scarface with Al Pacino was a remake from a 30s or 40s movie with yep. Paul, uh, Paul James Paul Mooney or James, James it was Cagney. okay. I thought Paul Mooney was in there too. That's he may have been. M U N I. Paul Mooney was a comedian. Yeah, but Cagney had the, uh, there, there was that one gangster film with Cagney where he's got the world is yours. Was Sign. that White Heat? I think that was White it Heat, right? Heat. It is, yeah, yeah, that's White Heat. Yeah. Um, the original Scarface, I believe, was Paul Paul Mooney. Okay. But anyways, Al Pacino was a remake, which was very good, and the landmark. I don't know if they should touch that one. There's some no. I don't know if you should some touch. Some of them, it's like remaking Casablanca. Like, what are you doing? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you want to fall on your face? Yeah. But some of them, the bar is set to a, a certain point to where you got to be like, I don't know if I can and touch that. And Scarface, I believe. I mean, just it's so synonymous now. Everybody has that poster. Out there. I've got one of them in my garage with a I bunch of like other. I told you that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also got one of Bob Marley too. So there you what, go. What is what is what does your your wife say about this? What you know? What <laughs> <laughs> you know? What it is. There's a lot that you could be asking about specifically. <laughs> does she? Does she like when you you put a poster? Does she come home one day and you're putting up a a Scarface poster in the living room and go no? Oh, okay, no. Well, well, yeah. So when actually when we when we separated, I bought a lot of posters, but I was planning on putting them in the garage and making like you know my little man cave. But the one I put in the house was the poster from the movie Goodfellas that the they seen when they had the body in the trunk, when the mom's right. talking about the dust, the old man and two dogs. And I had it on the wall. And when we, when she went back in, she's like, all right, that's got to go. And I'm like, <laughs> that's not going in. It's not even, nobody would even know that's a movie picture. Like a few people would, but not many. She's like, it's, it's got to go. It's got to get out of here. It's not staying. I'm just like, I'm not moving it. And then it was like, either it goes or I go. And so it, it went moved to the garage. It. <laughs> yeah. It went to the garage. Yeah, but yeah, she. I know who's winning that argument. Yeah, yeah, so all of my, you know, posters, movie posters, and all that is in the garage. I had this one made behind me. That's you know, it's kind of cut off in this one, but that's the De Niro print from Goodfellas. But right. Yeah, my garage is set up with a you know like a projector screen and and all that stuff. I thought about doing the studio out there, but it's not insulated and it gets very cold out there, so we're not right. good. Yeah. Okay. All right. But yeah, she she she'll get into some of that stuff. She'll watch Sopranos with me, but that's about it. And she she will watch Goodfellas. Okay, but as a good she, yeah, it is. Even if you're not a fan a fan of the mob genre, that's just still a good movie. I mean, it's it's the perfect gangster film. Really oh yeah, is. yeah. Did Did you watch Getting Gotti? Yes, on Netflix. I've yeah. not seen that. It's it's, it's good. I interviewed the. Oh, I've done a lot of stuff with Ruggiano. Yeah, I said. noticed as we're watching it. Uh, Jess is like, she goes, she goes, I think Wade interviewed that guy. Yeah. And I'm like, she's like, didn't you do a clip? I'm like, yeah, yeah, that that guy. And then another one, I think Wade interviewed that guy. And then yeah. another one comes up and I go, I interviewed him. <laughs> and then she's like, yeah, you did interview him. Oh, and Sal then, Polisi. Yes. And um, uh, they had, um, oh, come on. The guy who hangs out with um, uh, Michael Dowd all the time. What's his name? You know, he's, everybody hates him. Oh, A Light, John A Light. A Light, yeah, yeah, John yeah. A Light. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, he was in there too. Like, it was, I was amazing. Like, out of like the eight or 10, uh, like, let's say 12 people, <laughs> we had basically covered <laughs> all the mobsters between Wade and I, but none of the prosecutors. Like, we didn't even call them. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> the prosecutors. I, I had there. the lady, and people flipped out over that lady, Andrea Giovino, or what her name is. She's in the Get Gotti one. And the way it's oh. cut together, it's like, you know, we own the city and it's like everybody, the mobsters were or ex, ex mobsters and ex people were going nuts. Like she wasn't around and right. this, that and the other. And I actually had her set up for an interview. She had to reschedule. We're doing it next week. She was um, dating a really, really high profile mob guy that was a huge drug uh, runner, Eddie Lino. So okay. that was her into that, you know, lifestyle. But the, and I don't know if it's the way she said it or the way they cut it, but it was cut in a manner of her saying like she was right there beside him while they were doing it. Right. Um, and she's actually her story's been out for a while. She done a 60 minutes a long time ago. She just kind of let it and she wrote a book, but she just kind of got brought back in for this get Gotti thing. So it was kind of like, you know, who's this woman? Where is it? Nobody really knew her backstory. So that's why I'm 
I may just to get her on uh, to tell her story. But yeah, I, I like the Get Gotti, and that just shows you that thing was number one. I think for about two weeks on Netflix. So Gotti's name is still very powerful, oh, yeah. and just yeah. because it, of how he was, man, he was a charismatic dude. It was honestly, it was it was probably one of the better um, uh, documentaries that I've seen on that. You know that subject matter, not just Scotty, because they didn't follow. It was more about the trials and everything, right? But it, it was, you know, it was good. Originally, it was supposed to be, and I know this because I do a lot of stuff with Ruggiano and his manager. It was supposed to be Fear City too. You know, they did Fear okay. City about two years ago, and that was more from the cop side. Yeah, Fear City Two was supposed to be everything from the mobster side, and it just got to be so much about Gotti that it got renamed Get Gotti. So that was kind of how that that whole thing come about. And apparently, a lot of the stuff was shot for a while, and okay. it just finally come out. But yeah, I, I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. And then, yeah, you it, know, it was cool that everybody seeing all these people up there that, like you said, we've all had on our shows. Now I haven't interviewed Sal, and I find some of his stories just a tad bit hard to out there. fathom. Well, like he said it on there. He said he went to this guy's house. That's how he got the name Sally Ubats. He goes to this guy's house and he proceeds to, by himself, cut the man's wedding tackle, yeah, right. if you will, right off him. Now, Sal's not a very imposing guy to, to be able to pull something like that off. And let alone, wouldn't you need more than one guy, I would think? I mean, you got I one hand. He's going to struggle. You yeah. got to hold him down. You got one hand with the knife. I mean, that's it's going to be a, a little bit of a, a struggle there. I'm not letting somebody do that to me, not without right. fighting with everything I got. So some of the stories are a little bit out there for me, but I mean, it's, it's good entertainment. People love it. Um, I was going to ask one more question. Uh, uh, Brett, are you doing shorts? My team is supposedly uh, doing shorts. Okay. That'll be cool. <laughs> that'll be good. They, they were commenting on the hat today. They were like, Oh, that's going to be good. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'd hear it. Yeah. The short, because I was going to say your I, your shorts, I think did well on my, you know. Yeah, it, and that's what I was oh. telling uh, you know when I brought that to production team in, I was like, hey, honestly, my my shorts when I'm in a short, they tend to do pretty well. I just don't know how to do the damn things, and they were like, we've got you for an hourly fee, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, I was going to say the shorts drive a ton of of traffic not necessarily viewers right but subscribers okay yeah okay. since i've started doing them i've noticed a, a little uptick in mine and and i like i said i've done a lot with bread and they they turned out really well especially one of the last ones i put out when you was talking about uh finding out you could file income tax returns on that yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you just had so many good points i was putting all kind of different pictures and it. it was fun to do. i enjoyed doing that one it's like bam 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 okay <laughs> <laughs> It's like I go on a cross country trip, getting money out of these ATMs, and it's like a guy in a Cadillac just going. There. <laughs> no, they're fun. Uh, did you see Johnny Mitchell's got nine hundred thousand subs? Jeez, jeez, and he's not been doing this for two years. Oh, uh, I tell myself he bought them. There you go. I would I, hope that so. makes, makes me feel, feel better. better. Yeah, I was, but yeah, I was about to say it makes me feel better. Right. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot. lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot of subs. Well, I mean, you know, there's superstars, and you know, you know, that's and and then uh, then there's us. So, but so, how do you get to nine hundred thousand subs in two years? Did, well, you, pay, you have a story. Yeah, you. I mean, what, I mean, you do, yeah. what you do is you you sell you sell some marijuana. You get arrested for a low level marijuana deal. You go to prison for a a, a year or two. You get out. You go to a, a low security prison. Right. You get out. You then tell a, a bunch of people that, man, I just got out, starting over. I had a very low, I was, you know, I did a couple of years. I sold some pot, not a big deal. And then about four or five years later, you start realizing that people find it interesting and people are making tons of money by talking about their prison experiences. And then you alter your prison experience to be, I was in a pen. I fought my way every single day. I was a gangster. I was a tough guy. I fought every day. They sent me to the pen and, and that I, I was a huge drug dealer. I was working with the cartel and uh, you, you, you study, you read a bunch of books on it and everything. You get out, you start talking about it. And you get your comedian buddies to put you on all of their shows and you get 900,000 subs and you know, and that's cool. Like good so for why you. Didn't you and I do that I mean, because my, my story is true. Yeah. And yeah. you know, 
I wasn't social uh, savvy. Right. And social media savvy took me a little bit. And now I'm starting from ground, you know, from scratch. And and I'm I'm too honest, to be honest. For a con man, I'm extremely honest, which, you know, I really did it backwards. I should have been honest to begin with. I probably wouldn't have gone to prison. And then I could be I could be more skeezy now and I'd have 900,000 subscri- subscribers, but I went the other way. So I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to work for my stuff. Right. Yeah. right. But I had a guy tell me one time I didn't do enough prison not time bitter, or jail time to be on his story. So that's not bitter. Story. Really? You <laughs> yeah, didn't do he, enough jail time. Yeah. I don't think he actually grasped the, the story that I had. Cause I was like, and I even told him, I was like, Hey, I didn't do a ton of time, but I've got an interesting story. Yeah. And he's like, that was all, this first thing he asked was like, well, how much time did you do? I'm like, well, about 48 hours. And he's like, yeah, it's not enough for the show. But it was hell. Yeah. It was hell. And I'm like, well, it's not It's not really the point of the time. It's the I right. did time mentally after that for five years, if you yeah. want to call it that. I was like, but it's really the story. He's like, yeah, you know, I need people who's done a lot of time. I'm like, all right, yeah, if that's okay. your platform, I guess, you know. That's, that's, that's your platform. You do you, bub. Yeah, yeah. I was like, but yeah, that was, it, it wasn't time in jail, but just letting that linger over your head. Oh, I'm yeah, sure you guys man. have That'll periods of time. Great. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it is. A bit. Yeah, that's why I have to throw some color on there every once in a while. Listen, there were so many comments about his beard oh in the God. comment section. <laughs> You're like that beard. It's so, the one guy on Ian's show said that guy's beard is as dark as under the bed at nighttime. <laughs> <laughs> And I swear it don't look that dark, but on y- y'all have like really high end cameras, and I've not got anything in it right now. You can see the gray. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I dropped the um the exposure, the dark and up all the blacks. Okay, so that's oh, is it, do you really do that? Sometimes I do, yeah. But well, I, don't, I don't know if I did it on yours. It or not. don't look that dark, but when I see it on y'all's show, I'm like, damn, that does look that's really dark. dark. At least to me, it doesn't look that dark. But on that, yeah, yeah, the beard was like leading for Ian's show. Everybody was on the beard. And I'm just like, now I need to capitalize on that and get a beard company on board. There you and go. And let them sponsor crime and entertainment because it is, you know, a lot of people can't grow a full beard. I didn't realize I can't. That. I like, don't think I can. I look like, like in here, part. they can't grow it. That right. I used to ask guys, I'm like, how do y'all get that, you know, keep that shit so smooth in there, all detailed? Kind of like what you got right there, that little area right there. Right, right. A lot of people just can't grow it in there. And I asked that guy, I'm like, how do you keep that so smooth? Like, I can't do that. And he's like, I don't grow hair there. And I'm like, really? Hmm. Like, yeah. I was like, that's odd. And come to find out, I guess it's not a common thing for someone to grow like a full beard right. everywhere right. in their face. So yeah, I need if any beard companies are listening to this, listening. By, by some chance nobody's here at the two hour mark. <laughs> it's like nobody's <laughs> listening. To the two hour mark. Our last show. Up long ago. If, if if I had to bait this off the last numbers, I mean, what no what did it get like this far? What did you get ten? Ten thousand? Did it? Fourteen thousand? It got. I think I only made eight. Okay. No. Okay. Well, we're, we're not going in this to break landmark numbers. That's it's true. Just, we're just yeah, kind of hanging just, out. Yeah, we're just you know having fun. And we got a brand new show idea out of it of me and Brett are going. You know to that's not a bad idea. It's, it's truly it's not. It's not. And we'll find out about getting demonetized real quick because we got to exactly. use shows clips from the clips from the movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um. Wait a minute. Uh. Where Where did I Where was our last show? Oh, there it is. Seven thousand one hundred. Oh wow! Really? I know. Yeah. It went for two hours, which is roughly what this is going this for. This is going yeah. for two hours right now. Yeah, this, yeah. Has been, this is a struggle. Um, <laughs> it's a struggle. <laughs> I hear my wife. She continues to walk by the door like, is he still talking? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I get texts sometimes in the middle of the night. Are you still? I'm like, when I'm done, I come out of the room. That's when I'm done. That's when Listen. I come out. Listen, I've been in here all goddamn day, man. It's been all day. <laughs> let me tell you something about Ian. I got an Ian story. Uh-uh. So. Ian had um, Jess had the headphones on. They said, hey, you can listen while he's in there. So she put the headphones on. Oh. And they had the mics going. And they were setting up. And the guy, so it's Ian and his buddy were setting up in the other room. The doors closed. You know, I had left. I had gone to, like, the bathroom. So they know that I've gone. They don't realize that she's listening to them. (laughs) And Ian says... You know, like I know Ian doesn't like me anyway. He has has a hard time hiding it. But he said, listen, 
and you know jess is like super like like <laughs> territorial like very protective of me and she said he goes he was in there with the other guy and the other guy said um hey man he, he's something like you know whatever do you need do you need me to get a water you need me to do this or something something and he goes yeah bro he said he's yeah we're gonna need that he said this guy's a yapper <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. And Jess said, listen, she said, like, I stood up. I almost walked in there. And I thought, no, don't ruin this for him. <laughs> you want to walk in there. You want to walk in there and tell that little. And I was like, no, 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 no. Said, you did the right thing. And so now whenever somebody something happens, like I'll be on the phone with somebody and she'll she'll call in and I'll send her the thing. I'll like, hey, I'm on the other line. You know, you send her that I'm on the other line thing. You know, I'll call you later. Right. And she texts back and she's like, Okay, she'll go, how much longer? And I'll text her back. I'll go, I don't know. This guy's a yapper. <laughs> and it's it's going to be a while. So That's why I try not to call people too very much. I'll text yeah. you. I try not to call people unless it's really important. Yeah. Like, I think when I called you about those guys' channels getting taken down, that might have been the first or second time I've ever I, actually called you on the That's because you were in a panic. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I thought of you, too. I'm like, well, God, I just, I just seen the Merlino clip that you sent me. Like literally a day before that. And then these guys are saying they're getting their channels taken after that. I'm like, oh, I might need to call Cox. And let right. them know. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if this will be conveyed good over text. You, you know what else I did? I had just, I'm getting ballsy. I, I had just taken Gattaca and I had condensed the, that form that like the brother scene, them swimming, the whole. You said that to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had just yeah. done that. See, I don't think Brett watches anything. I'm, I'm. You had I'm, sent that shit to me, and I, I had no idea what movie that, that was. was. Like, what the you fuck? know what happens with Brett sometimes? I'll send him something, and as soon as it gets there, bring, and he immediately thumbs it, bring, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> you didn't. It's a minute long video. <laughs> At least wait a minute. What kind of con man? So, like, I know you didn't watch it. You don't know if it's good. I'll open it up, ding. <laughs> I watched it, but I had no clue what movie that was from. I never watched that movie. But yeah. so I, film, man. That's one of the things I told Jewel, and I said, well, what about this? I just did this. And he's like, take that down. What do you – don't do it, Matt. He don't commented it on it. Yeah. He commented on it. I think he said, are you doing a Clips channel now or something like that? Right. Or something? Movie, I mean, that's a movie channel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he told me I took that down too. But I don't think that's a bad thing for Instagram, though, right? I mean, it, no, I left like that it every, like, I le listen, I don't, my Instagram isn't like, it is monetized, but I've never gotten anything. I don't know what I'm doing. So yeah. um, they've never paid me anything. So like, I'm not concerned. I'm, you know, YouTube's my revenue, right? right? You know, YouTube and Spotify, those two things pay all my bills and anything else is just cake. Yeah. So like, like if, if Instagram disappeared. Yeah. I'll start another one. That lady that I had on who was the Vegas, sh she was the Vegas shooting, one of the Vegas shooting survivors that did the documentary 11 Minutes. Right. They got nominated for an Emmy. It was a really good documentary. A lot of the, it was like a four part series. It's on Paramount Plus. Uh, the whole first episode was a lot of like film footage from people with cell phones that night when the guy was shooting. Mm -hmm. um, but I was looking for some footage from that documentary to mix into a short. And it had Al Dean talking about him and his DJ on the bus. And then his DJ talking about he talked to, you know, somebody of this, the babysitter, had his kid in the hotel, wind up being next to the shooter. The shooter had every room on that floor except the one that his kid was in. And so I was like, all right, I need to try to piece this together. And I looked and it was like 58 seconds. And I'm like, I'll just steal that whole thing. And I just right. put my banner at the top and the bottom. And on Facebook, it, it had like over 200 and something thousand views. Oh, wow. My Facebook followers or likes or whatever went from like 1,000 to like 4.3 thousand. You got the people arguing about guns and arguing about, you know, was it an inside job? Did it really happen? Was it the government? I mean, it just, it, it I didn't know it was going to do that, but it definitely turned into a, a happy argument. I think I texted right. Matt and I was like, the gun yeah. people are going at it. It's it's great. I'm I'm watching the show, I'm watching the fireworks. <laughs> what but, did your yeah. what did your shorts get on Ian's? Oh fuck! It's over like 14 million now. 14 oh, geez, million, man. Yeah. Um, mm. We uh, still loves talking about his shorts on A and E, and he's like over 11 million views on TikTok. And finally, I, I didn't say anything to him. I was like. You know, I'm at 14 million now, pal. You can just pipe down over there with that 11 million shit. You might have beat me in prison time. You've done like 19 years. I got you on the TikTok views right now, buddy. Okay. Yeah. I, I counted up the other day. It was like, 
I think 14 or 15 million. And oh, I can wow. still see on my TikToks that people are still watching it because they'll like a comment that I've left. So it's still, you know, in the algorithm. And I get, right. I, I'm assuming they're following me from that and not from my own hard work, blood, sweat, and tears that I'm putting into my channel. <laughs> but, you know, I'll take it however I can get it. Uh, <laughs> all right. Hey, if you guys like the video, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. Also, I'm going to leave all of uh, Brett and Wade's links to their channels in the uh, in the description box. Please share the video. Please consider joining my Patreon. Also, please go and subscribe to my Clips channel. There's some great, funny clips there. Interesting clips. Clips from the heart. Tear jerkers. Whatever. There's something for everybody. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. See ya. Okay. Let's do this. Tear jerkers. Tear jerkers. <laughs> well, I think I cried once. Um, you did. You cried with Hicks. I seen that. I bro, I cry all the time, bro. I'm I'm I've become such a pussy <laughs> in, in my older years. I'm disgusted by myself now. 